work for him. Yeah. Okay. Um, so we will open the November 8th, 2017 meeting of the Board of Selectmen. And with us, uh, the Finance Committee is here. If you want to open your meeting. Sure. Opening Finance Committee at uh, 6.37. Is anybody recording the meeting other than Lake Cam? So our first order of business is to review the special town meeting warrant. Uh, that is the, the reason why we have the Finance Committee here with us tonight. Oh, is Rita? Who's Rita? Taking coffee, so I see. All right. Um, so we also have Norm, our town moderator. Thanks for coming. And we have the town meeting warrant for review. Uh, All right, so we have a couple things we need to talk about here, but I guess we can uh, go through this. So again, November 13th at 7 p.m. is our special town meeting. We're hoping everybody can attend. Article one is to uh, approve our firefighters contract. So this is the contract that we negotiate with our firefighters and the town and labor union <coughs> contract for our employees uh, at the library, the highway department, and our office clerical and administrative positions and supervisory positions. So this is the two union contracts that were negotiated that were not ratified prior to the last town meeting uh, is Article 1. I kind of just started okay. and then I realized I'm swimming in uncharted waters okay. here because right. you have much more, uh, have a much better handle on the process for this. <clears throat> I'm not concerned, but what happens if uh, it doesn't, the townspeople don't approve, just out of curiosity? Article 1? Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm not concerned that that's going to happen, I'm just more curious. Mm, nobody would get their raises. I mean, it wouldn't be ratified, the funding would be, wouldn't be there. So it would just stay the same and they'd be without a contract essentially? Right. Mm -hmm. No, because the contract was agreed to so i really don't know what yeah, you'd you do to find the money somewhere else yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. the yeah. uh, the money is actually in the budget already so that we're not appropriating we're simply transferring it already oh, is yeah. in the wage and personnel contractual obligations mm -hmm. so it's already transferring from an existing account so someone might say we are getting the seventy eight thousand from it's already in the budget Got it. we had put it in there in anticipation we couldn't spread it by department and that's what this is doing i see cool thank you so do we do we review all of these yeah, independently we don't have to or how do we each what's one the process after each one the finance committee has to uh, vote the recommendation mm -hmm. right okay so do we do that one at a time as we go through them okay okay i'll uh, make a motion to uh, support Article One. Second. Okay. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? None. Unanimous. Okay. Um, Article Two is is an increase in salary for the elected treasurer, collector, and town clerk <coughs> that was voted pursuant to Article One on June twelfth, uh, two thousand. 17. Their increases have to be separate from Article 3, the elected officials. You have, it has to be a separate vote. And that's on that amount, that 4,000, excuse me, 146. How come these were done outside of the last town meeting setting the budget for? The, if I may, Aaron? Yeah. The selectmen didn't vote on the non-union employees until after um, they'd reached agreement with the, the, all the unions. Okay. Right. So. What we ended up doing was was essentially mirroring the raises for non-union personnel, but we didn't have that determined yet because we we're still in negotiations with the with the other folks. Okay. Makes sense. Um, make a motion. Yeah. Make it easy, Christine. I'll, I'll make a motion to support Article Two. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Unanimous. All right, Article 3 is 
transfer of available funds, certain sums of money to defray <coughs> anticipated costs for FY18 for various accounts in the general fund <coughs> or take any action relative there too. So this is the list on page five. Can I just point out a couple of yeah, things? Yeah, no, do your thing, okay. sure. What I highlighted in yellow at your uh, last meeting, the board had voted uh, to put 70000 in the water infrastructure uh, stabilization fund because of the original estimate to run extend the water line was 320000 And since that meeting, oh, did I say fire? You didn't say anything. Oh. Um, the estimate came back at 257. So now the increase is only $13,000. So I wasn't quite sure what the board wanted to do. Uh, reduce the 70 to 13 and put the money maybe in debt service capital projects for capital requests in <coughs> first of the year. And then the other three amounts, the uh, property and liability insurance, the workers' comp, and the community development comes to 13. Uh, we're still waiting for the new growth estimate. Um, I guess their vision's having trouble getting the information into the DOR, so we still don't have certified new growth. So, uh, uh, okay. Todd and I have been waiting for that number, and I assume if new growth does go up that much to cover that would increase the new growth. That, that, that's just, but that point is just to pay the $15,000, is that what 13. you're saying? Mm -hmm. Well, we went to town meeting. We, yeah. we, 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 I, I don't think we should, we should budget more than 13. So you can take the difference between the 13 and the 70, and where do you want to put in the stable, uh, debt stabilization above it? Yeah. I mean, yeah. and I think it's probably helpful for the Finance Committee to understand the thought process yeah. Yeah. that yeah. led yeah. 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 So all of this. We yeah. could go through well, all yeah, of Let's do that. Yeah. yeah. And as well as all where the free cash from the yeah. left over. Yeah. 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 So I can handle it. All you, two. you, I don't know what you're waiting for. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Formalities. Do you have copies of that? Um, so, of course, I left my copy of it um, along with my. Sunday. No, I brought it to the regional FinCom. Um, so, we have it's 1.5 million in free cash that has come in 1577. And just to kind of give an idea as to where the sources of the funds came from. Um, we have the, the major components that are listed here. Where we have, <coughs> I'm gonna jump down first to C, which are the unused budgets. And this is something where department heads were allocated budgetary amounts and just didn't spend it for various reasons. Sometimes it was trying to hire someone that they didn't follow through on, um, where it happened you know, later than what was expected. Sometimes it was just you know, additional wants and needs that never came to fruition that happen to be in their budget. So I want to make sure that we're reviewing all of these budgets on a more reason, you know, a more consistent basis because I know as I went through the budget so far to actual this year, there's some line items and positions that haven't been filled and things like that because I don't want to keep putting money for the budget and allocating it towards things that will never get used. I don't think that makes any sense from a financial standpoint. So what ended up happening is we have about 500 and change um, that came from the unused budgets. That really has been shifted, I would say, to the schools. So when the change happened at town meeting floor, it was about $500,000 that ended up kind of shifting from the unused budgets that would have been there to the school budget. So in essence, that money doesn't really exist as part of the free cash because it's been repurposed and we have a new base, is what I would say, for the school budget. Does that make sense from mm -hmm. that standpoint? So I would say that, you know, if I'm looking at recurring free cash, I'm not counting that. So we can't count on the almost $600,000 that came in from last year because that's been already repurposed between 75 with the new raises that we have on here for the contractual obligations and then the money that went to the schools. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't exist. Because 
We looked at free cash and when we set the policies, we looked at free cash to fund <coughs> one-time money that comes in to fund one-time purchases. This is actually was not one-time money, this piece of it. So this is money that already has been appropriated for operating expenses through the last town meeting with the schools. So that's the way I look at it. Um, Jim, can I ask a question about that, please? Sure. Touch the camera, let's see. Mm -hmm. um, it was as of June 30th, so there was $592,000 that was, was turned back from the budgets, not doing what the budget that we're in right now. Does that mean the budget on July 1st was reduced by almost $600,000? So what I'm looking at it as is that as we moved into July 1st, 2017, that that money, which is no longer going to be another component of next year's free cash, because... No, I understand that my question yeah. is having to do with fiscal 18's budget that began on July 1. Yep. There was 600000 that was left over. Of the unexpended, did that was get the changed? Budget, was the budgets reduced by $600,000? Yeah, that, that's not the case, and that's why what I was saying is to really look at what we have in our budget to actual, because I know that what I've done this year is looked at it in a couple places where mainly it's new hires, where if you look at where we should be and how much we're spending of the 18 budget so far, there's areas that I, I have questions about as to why we're not spending in those amounts. So I think it, I think that probably answers your question. The budget no, wasn't. Doesn't. So uh, so I guess what I'm saying is the budget <laughs> wasn't. No no the budget wasn't adjusted down. So if it if there's, I'm not trying to. Mm -hmm. If there's six hundred thousand roughly six hundred thousand in fiscal 18's budget, why is spend that all the free cash here? But isn't it fiscal 17's budget that went unspent? Right right, right. yeah. And that can roll over. The we now in fiscal 18. Right. So when the budget was set yeah. for fiscal 18, we didn't have this number yet because we set the budget well, before we have our unused budgets. It was budgeted from 17. But so in 18, I mean the way that the budget process works is we pretty much get what the budget is from each department head, and we look at it and we compare it, you know, to what they had last year. And there's usually an increase or a request for an increase. So if they didn't spend it in 17, it's still in there for 18 when they brought it to us. So then my but question would be, why wouldn't you transfer from existing budgets to offset some of these costs instead of using free cash? Yeah, how does it get from an approved budget to free cash? Because it wasn't spent. You know what I mean? So, so if you had a, in 17, well, I know well, what you I, mean. Well, I, can I don't know something. that that's allowed. For instance, the police chief had uh, the opening for one of the officers, <coughs> the fire chief, mm -hmm. and they held off. They didn't sure. hire mid-year. They held off but until July 1st. That's, that's part of at the end of the year. If they had budget that should have been available to transfer at the end of the year. We, we didn't have anything to transfer it to, so it falls well, into free cash. Well, in the special town meeting before the annual, from the previous year, any transfers to offset, let's say, snow and ice or whatever came from that year's budget was spent. I guess I don't know the, the operating law, but I'm trying to reconcile how you can take what apparently was unused money in fiscal the last fiscal year and use it in this fiscal year. So it was budgeted because it money. closed into free, free cash. cash. So it's so if it was budgeted, it's five, say five hundred thousand dollars was budgeted. Mm -hmm. You only spent two fifty. The year closed. You didn't spend the two fifty. You didn't reappropriate it anywhere. Mm -hmm. So now it's available as free cash in the following year. Mm -hmm. That's really what ends up happening. So if you don't spend your budgets, if mm -hmm. there's other things, if your revenues come in, it's it's really how free cash comes to be. So mm -hmm. revenues, estimated revenues that come in higher than right. where they are, or or the opposite. You know, and then if there was an opposite, we'd need to transfer that mm -hmm. prior to closing out the end of the year. And I know on the health insurance, we had, sorry to say, a couple of employees die, and we had budgeted mm -hmm. health insurance for a couple of new employees that ended up not taking health insurance. So there's the hundred there. Yeah. Yeah. So and human services, we'd always run short in the veterans budget, and for whatever reason last year, that human services. There was quite a bit left over in the veterans' benefits. I don't think anybody's questioning what's left over. Mm -hmm. I mean, what was left over was by around 92,000. Mm -hmm. Right. That's yep. the number. Okay. Yeah. 
So that went into free cash. Right. My question is, is that that five hundred ninety-two thousand dollars gotcha. is also in 18's budget? It, right. right. So, so that's the piece where we know we have a couple of firefighters or a firefighter that wasn't hired. We have, I think, two police officers that weren't hired. So, those figures that are in there, the health insurance issue, um, we're not. They're not anticipated in fiscal 18. But that's why we're looking at it and saying, well. If you haven't hired somebody by now, are we going to end up with more of those unspent budget line items when we get to the end of the year? That's kind of the question. You know, the budget's been approved. It includes that, unless there were, I think actually in the fire department, we reduced some of the budget line items, you know, in certain areas where it wasn't spent previously. So we did look at that. So anytime it wasn't spent, we were questioning why it wasn't spent. And that was, you know, if it was somebody that was hired that just wasn't actually hired and the position was posted later. So that we did during the budget process. But all those hires, are they going to get hired in this fiscal year? Or they, they, have, they have been. They have been. So, mm -hmm. right. so, so we don't, don't anticipate this will be. Yeah, we don't anticipate this, this being <coughs> there, but we don't know, you know, where it's going to end up. I guess the question is really, you know, if people want to say, are, are people padding budgets to try to end up with free cash? We're trying to make sure that we're knowing that and looking at it and saying, you know, if you have this in the budget, why didn't you spend it? It doesn't make any sense to hold up money that then we can't right. even use until it finally turns into free cash. Right. So, um, right. you know, that that's, yeah, that, that's really the, and then the next big piece, it's $240,000. That was the final allocation from the water debt service when we didn't have to pay the debt service payment for the water tower that we weren't sure if we were going to close mm -hmm. by mm -hmm. the end of 2017, uh, 16. 16. And then so we had to budget it and put it in there. But then we ended up closing so we didn't have to make that payment. So that money was then available for free cash. So that's a one time mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. hit to free cash or an ability to have free cash. Then we have our local receipts. Um, so these are local receipts that were higher than where was anticipated at the time. Um, we had a very wish the state. <coughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. We had a, a very large building permit. How much was that one from Ocean Spray? It was, something it was, thousand. Yeah, it was close to ten. Close to two hundred almost. And that, in theory, would be over multiple years. Three years. They paid it was us three years. All we, up front. They, they thought it easier to write a check, one check rather than one, three checks. One per year. So all the renovations. So they gave us the, the renovations are a three-year renovation. They simply gave us the full okay. amount of money wow. for that. Yep. And that was the bulk of the uh, the building permit excess, if you will. Mm -hmm. So all of these things, you know, we kind of look at them as we do the the revenue side of the budget and look at where have we been. The excise taxes have been going up fairly regularly so we increased our estimated receipts on the motor vehicle excise last year again um, but it came in about two hundred eighty eight thousand dollars higher than anticipated right. um, you know again the building permits we had that mm. large building permit um, it, the license permits and fees the ambulance fees they're all dependent upon what people are doing in town mm. um, you know if they're pulling permits or you know mm -hmm. they're getting sick and going to the hospital um, or we happen to be good at our collections on the ambulance fees, which we had a whole discussion on that. Um, and then some other small amounts that are on there too. So those are the major components um, really that we have on there. There's, you know, state aid came in a whopping $11,000 more than what was anticipated. And uh, then we had a, a change in the tax receivables, which was a negative to offset some of that at 26000 So that's, those are the sources of <coughs> cash. So that being said, the transfers of free cash, um, what we talked about was to restore some of the items that went to the school district um, on town meeting floor, which would be to kind of keep with our financial policies, which was to fund the OPEB trust fund. <coughs> we were funding it at $230,000. Um, what was suggested was that we should fund in what the amount was plus the lost interest that we lost by not putting the funds in. We've actually had a great rate of return on the OPEB trust, so it's about $20,000 that we've missed out on uh, by not funding into the OPEB trust at that time. So we're proposing 250 on there. Um, a restoration of the stabilization fund back to the million dollars where we were. 
um, for the money that came out of stabilization at town meeting. And then looking at the police station, um, we're still trying to figure out what number that's going to come in at. Um, and I think, you know, we're going to get an update, um, I think, from the project manager probably or the architect as to where we are with regard to that estimate. But we've only been authorized to borrow $8 million. And so there's a possibility that with escalation and what's going on in the construction industry that we may end up with a number that might look a little higher than what was originally anticipated, which would be a problem for our long-term debt position. Um, so in lieu of that, to put a little bit more into debt service capital projects, that would bring it up from, I think it's at 730000 right now to roughly $900,000 there. Um, and then the water stabilization, that was for the water tie-in, as we talked about a little bit earlier. And then we have a bond anticipation note due right now, which is a three, we renewed it for three months so that we could address it at the special town meeting. Because what's happened over the past couple of years is that we have been making some investments back in capital projects, but they come at a price, which is the annual debt service. Um, we have $110,000 due on our pumper truck. It was a $550,000 pumper truck that we needed to get, and that's five years' worth of payments at $110,000 each. $110,000, if you were to look at the debt schedule, is the largest debt payment, I believe, on there. That's certainly the largest one that's not exempt. Um, you know, as we talked about with the policies, we wanted to make sure that if we were borrowing roughly over a million dollars, anything went out um, that would be exempt so that we could maintain the fiscal health, I guess I would say, of the town. So that that's a large component of that bond anticipation note. In our operating budget next year, we would face probably the largest debt payments that we would have. The debt schedule, I think, was 425000 um, out of our operating budget for next year, which I don't find to be sustainable given the increase to what was brought to the schools, where I anticipate the school number to possibly be going forward. Um, so I'd like to do a little bit of debt management while we have the money that came in from our one-time funds to help us out in that scenario. So that's what we, and I kind of went back and forth with, we don't have to necessarily pay it off, but 400,000 of that mm -hmm. is actually for the design of the police station. So it's really a large component of it towards the police station. We didn't pay off a portion of it also at town meeting. That was another transfer that happened on town meeting floor was to not pay a portion of the bond anticipation note. So we're kind of looking at this and saying, we really need to get the debt schedule under control so that we end up being able to better manage our long-term finances. Yep. So that's kind of where we are with where these transfers are coming from. And then there's the insurance piece. And then, again, it would be great, but I'm, I should advocate for the fireworks for CDC, but I'm, I'm not going to be, you know, hurting if people decide they don't want to spend $5,000, you know, to support the CDC's fireworks. It just took us three years to fund that. Um, you know, over the past three years to be able to have them. I know people like them, so that's just a small piece, but. Is that Winterfest? Winterfest, yeah. So, so what do we, uh, yeah. no, I was just, uh, so are we essentially donating everything in free cash? Is that the plan? We're allocating everything in free cash, yeah. If it, if it ends up it's, yeah. In, in a stabilization, you have a lot of money in stabilization. Yeah. When I when I say a lot, whether, whether uh, whether our numbers say a million dollars and then debt service stabilization will be nine hundred thousand dollars. So there's money available, but it pushed some of it pushed that is the one eighty six three forty four you see there. Yeah. Plus part of the seventy. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe maybe uh, fifty five of that ends up there too. So you're adding over two hundred thousand dollars <coughs> to the uh, debt service stabilization, which I think is currently at 715. Yes. So the answer, the long winded answer is yes, but you still have a couple million dollars in stabilization accounts. Yeah, a million in debt service, almost right. 900,000 in debt service, and then a million right. for the town. Yes. Yes. So you still have available funds. And uh, I, I don't want to. I don't want to say what would happen <laughs> for the certified free cash as you move forward, but the free cash uh, by year, uh, which I had here somewhere, 
uh, two, 2014 as an example, so 14, 15, 16, 17, was 700,000, a million, a million five, and two million. And so uh, it's unusually, we, we call it unusually high. It was generally in the three, four hundred thousand dollar category. Prior to that, I think you look at it, a lot of it is the, uh, the, uh, Ambulance? Permits, excise taxes. But if I, you know, I, I'll give you the, the answer is yes. We're spending the money to pay down debt because our <coughs> debt significantly peaks. It goes from $275,000 a year to over 425000 basically because we uh, bought the fire pumper, a backhoe, and another ambulance, so that's why the the uh, who you've been involved in the in the capital yeah. procurement. So it spiked because of those particular items. I don't expect to buy another fire truck for another 15 years. Who knows? But you know something like that. You know what's on the capital plan for this year? Yeah, and I mean in general, what we end up doing it, it's kind of funny because I think we could probably just say yeah. you know we'd approve. Usually, what happens is three hundred, right. three hundred thousand comes out of free cash, yeah. and then four hundred comes out of um, borrowing mm -hmm. on anticipation notes, and that's why, you know, the debt service is capital project stabilization debt service, so that we'd have the ability to right. to kind of plan that. Those, um, those those meetings have been fairly contentious. If you go back and look at them, you certainly would find me for whatever reason on one end of the spectrum and other people on the other end of the spectrum. But I would I would hope that we, we always buy three, we've been buying three police cruisers a year. They put 50 something thousand miles on, on three of them per year. Uh, so we do that. I don't, I expect a couple of used highway department trucks. There's certainly some IT requirements that we'd be doing, but I don't envision it to be 700,000 because I was jumping out the window, as Ryan would know, uh, every time it got to that level. Okay. So to answer uh, <coughs> Norm's question, it's generally in the four to $700,000 category. I'd like to see it closer to the four, but we're not here for that. No, but reason. what I'm saying is you're putting this money towards the debt from previous year's capital expenses that I, you're going to borrow again this no, year. I, I hope that we'll have some free okay. cash coming up to do that. The free cash, if we okay. take a look, if we take a look at the excise taxes as an example. Right, but you, you then tra you're looking to transfer it out transfer. of what's yeah. in the stabilization. Well, uh, no, I, I, no, I was addressing George's question about we're, yeah. we're using the free you're cash to pay down, down right. debt. I'm hoping that we're not taking any money out of stabilization. Uh, that, that's what I'm hoping. So you're going to borrow in the spring for our next town meeting? We, so the option would be on the table to either yeah. take a, a, a transfer right. from capital projects, right. debt service stabilization for what right. we want to yeah. do with it yeah. and or to do a bond anticipation note. Yeah, yeah it's the right. same thing. But hopefully to a much less level than we've been doing. I guess uh, for me the concern is is knowing what happened during our last town meeting where we basically had to take money away from OPEB and stabilization anticipating that I just it doesn't seem like it makes feasible sense to take to pay down or, or deplete our entire free cash knowing that we have potentially something else bigger coming up so you're not going to pay down or pay off your mortgage when you think you might have a roof that you have to put in. Well, so uh, I think we're all part of the town's financial policy. Certainly the selectmen and the finance committee mm -hmm. signed that, that we're not to use uh, one-time funds right. to fund operational budgets. And the state, if we just read the recent issues by the state, although I never, hopefully, and I don't follow what the state does say, but even they've taken a position on both the OPEB payments and uh, using free cash for operational budgets. They're saying you're crazy to be doing that. If the money was not in, in stabilization, I'd be concerned. 
but because it's there, it can still be taken out by the voters. Right. It can still be taken out by the voters. Uh, we've yet to ever see a budget. The, the last town meeting from the school was, this is it. We'll give you numbers that will make sense as we move forward. Where is their five-year budget? What do they need? I don't know. And I don't know if you know. You go to the regional school finance committee meetings. But the money's in stabilization. It can come out. I get that. So I think, you know, I had a, a an issue with it at first, and we kind of talked about it because I said, I don't want to just pay down debt. Yeah. You know, that to me, that's, again, kind of what you Especially said. Especially with the, the rates really favorable. So, but my, my concern was freeing up cash in the operating budget so that it is available for some of the increases that we know we have to handle, which includes the almost $500,000 base adjustment from the schools mm -hmm. from last year, because otherwise we're going to be paying for that $230,000 through our operating budget instead of freeing that up in our operating budget for the next couple of years. Mm -hmm. So from a sustainability standpoint, because I, I looked at it and I said, mm -hmm. maybe we just pay off the pumper. You know, it's $550,000. Maybe we just do that and say, see you later, it's done. And then we have, you know, 400 something thousand dollars that we transfer into capital projects debt service stabilization so that we have the option to transfer that. So that was one of the things that I was thinking about. And then, but by doing that, we still end up, we do end up freeing up some cash then in the operating budget, mm -hmm. but it's only 110000 instead of the 230. Mm -hmm. So that, and again, from a sustainability standpoint, I was looking at it from the longer period, so I was okay I with that. it, yeah. but I, mm -hmm. I certainly had the same reservations at first of why would I, why would I do this? You know, what's, what's the point in doing it? But so, so I could, I could go either way, honestly, with it because, but I'd want to make sure that it's set aside because it is one-time money, that right. it's set aside and it's, it's a process and it's a vote that really needs some clarification to take it from the debt service or capital project stabilization fund to apply it to the capital projects that we want to actually mm. pay for in this year. I mean, Rich, did you have a question? Yeah, I have uh, the same concern that uh, George has is that, uh, first of all, the town has never spent all their free cash in a special town meeting in the fall they've always carried most of that money over to the spring. And the town meeting, annual town meeting, spent $450,000 in capital item out of free cash. So now you're going to spend all that money, and that's $1.5 million, $1 million or whatever. That leaves no money for any capital items. That leaves no money for any emergencies that may be required, whether it's snow and ice. Or, and you may say, well, I have some of that money in the budget. You do. But you never know, you know, what the wind is going to be. So to bring it down to zero doesn't make well, any sense. Well, it's actually, it's not being spent, though. It's Some of it's being allocated for different stabilization funds. Yeah, well, one of the, one of the well, you know my feeling on the OPEP, so, I mean, you know, and I'm going to say that again, just so you know. It's just no fine. secret. I mean, how I feel about that. Yeah, but that's that's counter to this entire group. Right, where we have a right. voice. That's okay. Right. It's, it's counter to the entire liability. group that sets the fiscal policy for the town. Right, but the fiscal policy for the town, which I read, which was approved last September, you know, talks about debt service and so forth. So you just went to the town and last a year ago and said, I'm going to borrow money, $550,000 for a bumper. I'm going to borrow $110,000 for a front-end loader. I'm going to borrow $800,000 for the design of the police station. Now you're taking $920,000 a year later and paying all that debt off, whereas you should look at what the debt schedules need to be done. We got twenty million dollars in road Rich, work. That, that's, not ac that's not accurate. Where if you exactly? look at what's happening, that's not where the nine hundred and twenty thousand dollars isn't going to pay off debt. It's it's allocated at all these different line items. No. Am I, am I reading that wrong? No, that, that is the bond interest. That is the bond. No, that's the oh, balance. That's the bond interest. Yeah. yeah. And, and I see. Okay. I apologize. Mm -hmm. Nine twenty of the. No, I see what you're saying. Five yep. seventy-seven. Oh, right. I mean, as as George said, and I looked at the bond anticipation notes, the rate is one point three five. You're not going to get any better than that. And what needs to be done is you look at the capital items. There's what eight million dollars in the capital plan. There's potentially four million dollars in renovations that Swampsit that may need to be done. I don't think this is good planning. 
I really don't. This Do you understand that this is a reaction to what happened on town meeting Florida to a certain extent? I just think in general. You but know, you understand you get, that, You talked about right? the school budget. Well, first of all, you talked about free cash being less than what it is right now. And it's probably going to happen. Yep. Okay? Which means less money available, not only for the town, but for two capital, you know, projects and stuff like that. Second thing is, nobody has any idea what the budgets are going to be for fiscal 18. You haven't even started the process. You don't even know what the revenue projections are going to be. And you're turning around and you're spending the $1.5 million without understanding that. I mean, if I were you, if you want to do it, you should wait till the annual town meeting to figure out where you are. That's my opinion. I'm sorry. But I, I just can't see spending $920,000 paying off debt that a year ago you told the town meeting you were going to borrow, borrow the debt. It was borrowed okay. in, in multiple no, that's a, phases. That's, that's my that's opinion. That's a legitimate point I appreciate it okay. um, yeah. does anybody have any the, the, right the only point I, I want to make is there is money in the stabilization the, the, the <coughs> point the point of, the point is that it's never you can't borrow money any cheaper we should we should be looking forward to cutting expenses not increasing at all we should be buying well I think the white elephant in the room the is the fact that right this is a reaction to a certain extent so as to what happened on town meeting right. floor. And if we don't do something Different. to... Um, what does that mean? I don't understand what that means. Well, the school is supposed to come up with a budget <coughs> for the next five years. They said that's what we're going to do. We're going to project what we need. And they've yet to do that. Okay. So we can't make that them do that. what happened on town meeting floor. So what happened on town they meeting floor? They stole $500,000 that stole was earmarked <laughs> for other items. <laughs> Yes. So, again. <laughs> yes. So, so really, what? Grand theft larceny on, on the floor after 49% of the people so, left the room. So, so, if you want to get into the politics of it, it never should have been brought back. So, we can go back and hash it all actually, if we want to do that. Actually, for the bylaws, it was brought back in an appropriate way. Let's settle uh, that discussion. In, in, right your, in your opinion, in but that, my opinion, in your opinion, not in a lot of other people's opinions. Which is per the bylaws. So, so I get it. I get it. So we can go back to the town meeting. <laughs> so Let's move forward with no, this. I think what, what, that's my point, Norm, yeah. is that there's what happened on town meeting floor is was was not anticipated. It caused. Mm, it was it, anticipated. I believe. It caused havoc you to our budget. Town meeting without no, let a me budget finish. Let me finish. It wasn't anticipated, okay, because the person who made the motion didn't specify where the money came from. It wasn't until Rich came down and specified where the money came from that they even had an idea what was happening. So, if it was anticipated, it was poorly planned, at the, to say the least. But prior to town meeting, the finance committee and the board of selectmen knew what they wanted to ask for. No, but my point is, is that I'm yeah, trying to answer your question budget, about right? why this is a reaction to a certain degree of what happened on town meeting floor is $500,000 of money that we all discussed and voted on where it was going to be allocated all of a sudden was reallocated. Yes. Right. So, so now. But correct. So now we're here. So, well, I'm saying part of this is a reaction to that. Okay. So, how do you not? So what I'm saying is, I, I can understand your your refinancing OPEB, your refinancing stabilization, yeah. and I don't know what else the so, money had come from. The rest of this is going fine debt service, but I think the question is, and that's that's what I'm trying to get. How does yeah. this a reaction oh. to town meeting? How is putting 921,000 into debt service. Well, I don't necessarily so, think yeah. that piece is. I think the funding of OPEB is. Right. Well, I can answer right. that. So that's what I'm asking. But, well, it's also, right. it is, though, a portion of that, too. So $120,000 came from not paying a required payment on the bond anticipation note. That was a portion of, that was allocated to the schools. There were two pieces of debt that we had to pay that we didn't pay. <coughs> mm -hmm. That rolled into this. So that's 120,000 of it that's included now in this larger note. In the 921. Then, exactly, in the 920. And then on top of that, it's looking as to how can we try then to manage our long-term operating budget 
by looking at the fact that we have these debt payments there so that we can free up cash right. to satisfy the $500,000 so it doesn't have to come so out that's of. that's the part that's not the reaction to town meeting? No, that's what I'm trying to get that, to. That is part of the reaction, okay. I guess so I would how say. How is that the reaction? So it's really to make sure that we've adjusted as well as we can for what we know is coming in the operating budget because the school number has been raised mm -hmm. that we know that when that budget comes to us, that's the base next year. So that we need to free up some more cash in the operating budget to make it so that we have a little bit more flexibility because otherwise we're paying an additional so, two thirty. So you're saying rather than have the free cash being in the operating budget, you're freeing up what is coming out of debt service in the operating budget. So that it's long term mm -hmm. because it's more of a it's operating mm -hmm. instead of one time. Mm -hmm. So it's looking that way. And that's why probably when I looked at it first I was more comfortable with let's pay off one of these things. Mm -hmm. Along with the one twenty, we paid off the pumper, it's four forty. So now we're looking at saying you've gotten rid of, you know, five or six hundred thousand of it. But we still have the issue with there's a little bit left then on that bond anticipation note, which again, if the Finance Committee wants to do it that way, I'm okay with that too. Right, but I guess that's what I'm asking. If you're just going to go borrow more later this year or in the next fiscal year <coughs> to purchase things, to spend on capital, mm -hmm. you could certainly use well, that money to no. just Well, and that's why I, that my now. other thought was we put that other 300000 or 400000 into the capital project stabilization yeah. so that it's there and it's earmarked for that, again, so that it's not mm -hmm. going to be used for mm -hmm. operational purposes unless that is something that happens mm -hmm. um, on town meeting floor. But I'm okay with that as another concept, which is what we had talked about too. Instead of paying off the entire amount, it's we pay off what we didn't pay at town meeting because it went to the schools and we pay off one of the things. Now, it's either the pumper or it's the, the police station design. So you kind of, the, the thing actually what we talked about was I would rather pay off the police station design per se because it's, why did I say that? Because it's not an actual physical capital asset. That, I think that was the thing because if we wanted to go out and re-bond anticipation note something, we could and in theory um, we could use some other sources of funds for that capital asset, but we couldn't do that. Um, because right. we actually can right. use, if we needed to and we got into a problem, the sale of the Howland Lo Road property or the real estate sales, you can use to pay long-term yeah. capital assets, but not police station design that we went out and... Right, which is another question. So if you're concerned about paying down debt, why don't we use that money to pay down... There's only certain things we can do, because right. the only thing that we can do mm -hmm. is pretty much the pumper or the backhoe. No, that's short-term that. debt. Why can't you use it to pay down long-term debt? Because we everything's exempt long-term. Sure. So we don't have anything that's like... So What's it, wrong which with is good in taxes our, earlier? We can't do it. We can't actually no, pay it off early. Yeah. Hmm. That's the issue. Because we looked at that and said, well, we why want, don't we pay off like the SRF do loan? Why don't we pay yeah. off so this? They pay off the so senior so center pay off. The, <coughs> we bought the property taking a 30 year or whatever note. And we're still paying for it even though we sold it. But we can't pay off that debt. Yeah. Right. So mm -hmm. we, we financed the bond. And did we and make it's enough not money on it yet. to pay the interest, do you think? Which one? The Holland? No. Okay. No, we got 3% more, but the debt certainly was so, that. So th th there's a prime case to go back to say you buy land to prevent building and you bought it from a builder that did 150 perks. Why would you buy it? So we've been busy trying to sell the water tower, the Holland Street property, the assessor's office, and if you want to take that <coughs> fund and put it towards operational items rather than one time items well, I don't think you you'd can. be making a big well, you'd be making a big mistake you can't yeah well right yeah so i mean if, if that's kind of the, the thought pattern behind right. how we ended up there again if people think it's cleaner or better i'm okay with splitting that debt payment between the soft yeah. debt well, you're if back I want to, to the same that. thing as, as long as it's it in stabilization it's in stabilization so. people can you can still get it out. Uh, I want to do less borrowing and no borrowing. One can say, how are you going to do that? I'm going to say, I've got to spend less. Mm -hmm. Got to spend less. It, I think I'd like to see more get put in that 
capital project stabilization so that when we go to those meetings in January and start setting the budget, we have Something more flexibility. To yeah. I think we're seeing the more money we put towards roads. Right, we have that, which is. Right, that whole area, Southwest Street looks beautiful. You know, I'm sure right. in other areas of town, you can start to see some of that paying off. John, what's, um, what are the pieces, or do you know, Rita, the pieces on there? Because the pumpers. The pump, the pump was 440. The, the backhoe is 80. The architect eight, yes. was what well, it balanced left to pay, and then the uh, the architect was was 400. Yeah. So if we pay the 480, right, and then you right. take the other piece of it and put it into capital project stabilization. Right. It, it does doesn't bother the me. The backhoe is 20 that. grand it's a still year. Still in stabilization. It's not like a. So. I still don't think you have a lot of money in stabilization. A million bucks. Two million. Two million. No, one million in stabilization. Insta right. One for in debt capital. and debt. capital. Yeah. Different. Different animals. So, is that? I tell you, I'm not. Uh, I'm, I'm still not. So, I guess I don't see the sense of urgency of doing that right now. Why? Why would we not wait on it? Um, I just, the idea of. Just even even putting it into stabilization doesn't make sense to me. So but. my concern with that is that free cash is misunderstood widely um, because it's coming from one-time money. I am very nervous to put free cash to the operating budget as a means to save the day and or yeah. you know really for long-term financial planning. I think it's a very poor decision to do. So by allocating it now. To where we believe we're going to need to be able to access those funds, as we typically do, three to four hundred thousand dollars in capital projects, um, so we can take care of that borrowing. If we decide to put it in to those stabilization accounts, we're in a better financial position than to have a concept of this is money that's available for us to use in the operating budget. I don't want to get in that hole where all of a sudden we're spending free cash in the operating budget and then it's not there anymore. And it's, you know, if you want to look at it similar to how the schools funded their operating budget through their E&D account, there's $84,000 left in their E&D account. So now when they used a million dollars in their E&D account from last year to fund their operating budget, they're already starting out looking to the towns of Freetown and Lakeville to say, you guys are going to have to pony up at least the extra 500 grand each because we can't contribute the million that we put into our own budget last year. It doesn't exist. That's what I want to avoid because we already know that's coming because right. there's no way that that's not coming because the state isn't going to come out with a nice check for a million dollars to say, oh, you know what, we'll take care of that portion for you. So that's my concern is using one-time funds for operation purposes or operational purposes, I think is a very unsound fiscal decision. Now, in that event, if there is something where the budgets and the budget requests come in at a point where they are so much higher than what the town can sustain, that might be a, a good case that somebody comes in to propose an override. Um, but I don't want to mislead people by saying that one-time money is a solution for a long-term operational problem. As we, we've all said, that's the wrong solution in the financial policy. And I get that. Whether the state says it, we say it, we've written that down uh, for sure. From a perception perspective, though, I, I think that it really, we're giving the impression that we're spending this down for the sake of not having it available, too. So, you know, I caution us on that, which, uh, right, that's which is what we're, what we're doing. doing. Um, but, and then we're saying we had this money, but now we don't, so the only option would then be an override, which says the taxpayers need to come up with that money, although we already had it. So, and I get what we're saying, that we don't want to fund one-time fund, you know, uh, operational budget with one-time funds, but even if we could push back an override, if that was what was needed, if we could push it back a year, that's savings for our, for our taxpayers. So, I guess... Yeah, but it it's isn't gonna, because if be you're using one-time money to just get one year and, and I, I get out of that. it, why, I get it. why jeopardize, why cannibalize the town's budget for that purpose? I mean, I'm not against the idea of, well, I shouldn't say that. Maybe an override is a necessary process under the circumstances we have. I mean, 
we don't have any control over the school budget. That's the purview of the school committee, and that's okay. But if their budget continues to increase and outpace the resources we're capable of providing it, there's really no other way that, that they can match the need for those resources. They have two choices. They can get more money or they can cut services. So I, I think I want to keep a clear line, a, a distinct line between the town's uh, budget in terms of what we are trying to commit to provide the level of services to the community. I want to take into account, obviously, what the school needs as well, but if that need outstrips what we can reasonably provide, it's really up to them, I think, to, to turn to the voters and, and say, hey, look, we need more money. And, and I, I don't think we should, we should give away one-time money to get one to kick the can one year down the road. I don't think it makes any sense. I, I see both sides of the coin here, I, but I think spending, putting money aside for capital projects now and paying off some debt sets us up for the next budget to be able to take on more of the school budget. Again, I just, yeah. I, I, I guess I, I don't see the sense of urgency right now. Yeah. Um, I just, it just doesn't make sense to me. I think that the urgency, if you want to call it that, is more along the lines of setting up the budget process for next year by saying that <coughs> this is one-time money that has been set aside and we really need to look at our operational income and our operational budget and expenses so that we can determine how much is left, you know, at the end so that we know where we stand from an operational standpoint. What we don't have on here, which would be a great thing to show too, is is it $9 million if we wanted to redo all the roads that we have for the liability? Mm -hmm. You know, $12 million for the OPEB liability. Um, you know, we've got potential other capital projects, you know, the highway barn, which, you know, who knows, we'll have a new highway superintendent, so we don't know what, what that might look like. Um, but, you know, those are other long-term plans that we have to be aware of within the town to be able to plan for that, too. And I think that by putting the money aside now, it doesn't leave it as the unknown uh, money known as free cash that people don't understand it necessarily and then want to spend it for operational purposes. So I don't think it's a bad idea to take what ends up happening as one-time funds. And again, if, if I knew that we didn't have a base adjustment on the school budget, in 18 and that we've taken care of the unused budgets here from last year that I I might feel a little bit differently about being able to say we really have some additional money in the budget that should be used for operational purposes but I don't really see that so right, I mean we'll, we'll raise both, our estimated both, both you and Mitzi are on the regional school finance committee and the first question would be What's your five-year projection? What, what do you see yeah, you need every thought, year? Because if you it. want to just do it on town meeting floor one year at a time, you're going to, there'll be no money in the town coffers, none, and there still won't be a plan. You've got to force a plan, whether you do it through the regional finance committee, whether you do it through the town floor, you have to force a plan to say, what is the school plan? It's not us. It's a school plan. It's, the selectmen have no control over that. Uh, you go to those meetings and you have to say, what is your plan? They said that the last meeting on the floor, they'll come up with a plan. And I think it's right. important to know, too, that if you were to really kind of look at the fact the school doesn't have a million dollars to fund, you know, their budget because they used it out of their E&D last year, they're already starting out a million dollars short on top of the fact that we used almost $500,000 of one-time money. So that's a new base adjustment. Hmm on top of the fact that they're in contract negotiations right now. Usually the contract negotiations have resulted in an increase in their budget anywhere between 700000 and almost 900000 with the health insurance benefits as well. So you're looking at a budget that's at least $2 million higher than the approved budget from last year that the towns are going to be the ones to have to fund it. And that's without any other additional increases in services um, that the school would be giving. Just to stay as status quo 
they're going to need probably about two million dollars more than what they had that we will need to contribute. That's, so that's a one year number. And that's just year one. One year number. Mm -hmm. So even if you were to take all of the free cash, then what would happen the following year is we don't have that free cash available again. So now we're trying to climb out of an even bigger hole to try to figure that out, and our other town departments are going to be impacted because we've allocated to the schools. I mean, the, big, the biggest one, if you will, is excise tax. The car sales this year, to date, the only month that has been better than the previous year, I believe, was the month of either September or October. Only one of the 12 months is greater car, car sales than the year before. That's in spite of two hurricanes that benefit the car companies. Mm -hmm. So I could say, oh, the excise taxes are too high. Uh, you know, let's, let's add them to the revenue source and let's plow that back in the budget. That's, that's dangerous territory based on car sales. I mean, we try to track the car sales. We take a look at every new home that's being built for, for new businesses. I mean, the businesses that, that funded the new growth was, was nine duplexes at, uh, at uh, LeBaron, one significant executive multi-million dollar home built, and the Seasons gas station. And Baldy's, they're not repeating. So, so to take one-time funds is dangerous business. So to summarize here, are we, we're good then with these changes to Rita, do you want to just tell us what was discussed? Well, I'm not Are sure. Are you yeah. reducing Are, the debt service? I think so. So this is how I see it would be that we'd only be paying for the police station design and the backhoe because, again, it's not. Police yep. station design was how much? 400. 400. And then the backhoe, which is 80, 80, 80 balance. get that out of there. Um, and then we'd be putting any in interest. any interest on yeah. it. So there'll be some adjustment there. But then roughly what we'd be putting into debt service capital project stabilization would be about six hundred twenty seven. You, you right, you'd be adding you'd be adding another uh, we'll the four forty for the fire truck we'll plus, plus the one eighty so one eighty seven and maybe yeah, some of that uh, water one. So that's in in anticipation of next year's capital projects. Right. right. Yeah. And, I think it was norms yeah. right. and any unanticipated <laughs> additional costs on the police station, if need be, that Culver, we'd have. Culver, and, and, Culver. and they'll be delineated. Culver. Right, they'll be delineated by the town meeting. So, so we put those down. And still nothing in nothing in free cash, essentially. Correct. Right. Is there is there a um, deadline of utilizing free cash? I guess does it expire? I, mean, I don't know if this financial tech or accounting terminology. Well, then it closes into closes retained into earnings, yeah. okay. and then it's, but it's like the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And usually what happens is that Todd reviews, the town accountant reviews some of the warrant articles that are still open. That happens sometime around the end of the year. So that's where we're able to kind of look and see, okay, we never spent this. We didn't spend that. We might have some ability to transfer from previous warrant articles as well. And that's been, I think, the past couple of years, I mean, since Todd's come on, we were able to get a couple hundred thousand dollars out of some pretty old warrant articles that no one even right. knew right. were still out there that money had been set aside for, um, which has been good. And so that's we, kind of a review. Right. And we used the new growth to fund things. And, and I mentioned those yeah. items. This year is somewhat we, of a quiet year. The next year, we believe there'd be more, obviously, at LeBaron. There's potentially buildings that will go on by the, by the train station. And there's always the talk of the, uh, the hospital. But that's always been the talk of the hospital. So this year is kind of a, a quiet or a normal year for new growth. But next year, which you won't see that money for right. another year but, beyond that. But I think it's important to note, too, that with the 2.5% levy limit, we only bring in, I think this year it'll be $540,000. And that's the yeah. only guaranteed funding that we have in additional increases without right. an override. Right. So we have to be, right. you know, right. cognizant of that. And then we've These got marijuana the guys online. And everything right. like that. Would right. increase the town's that's revenue. what we're trying to say right. is we're, we're getting the host agreement right. ready. Right. And, and, <laughs> right. and I, look at, I look at it at the same 500, but I always add the new growth of about 250 to that. Right. But the new growth is not going to be fabulous this year. It should be the year after that. All right, so 
everybody's comfortable with that. Rich, did you have any more questions or anything? I disagree with playing down the police station because you don't know what the cost of the police station is going to be at this point. That's not a question. Okay. I won't, I won't ask my question. It's, yeah, okay. the design piece, not anything else. Yes, we right. have to. We have to pay the design. It's just the design fee. Yeah. Right. right. Do, 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 does everyone get the beacon at all? Do you guys get that? We we should make sure they get a copy of that. Not that the state is is the greatest reading as as I send them city and as town we, as we have thought, them. Okay. But it but it talks about the OPEB. It talks about the free cash beacon. being used in operational no, budgets. Still doing. Uh, we we can give you copies of the excerpts, but. Uh, you'll, you'll eventually have to pay it. Does get a beacon and I put it in the mailbox. Fin you finance mailbox? does everyone on the have finance committee. Do we have a mailbox? No, just the chairman. Just the chairman. Do I have a mailbox? <laughs> Do I have a mailbox? Uh. No, we don't have one. Where's, where is it? <laughs> you got, you have your desk. Yeah. Let's, let's add at least the finance committee to what the state's saying. You might want to give the finance committee a tour of town yeah. hall. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Do you guys want to make voter recommendation? Um, with with the modifications. Right. Yes. Okay. I'll. I would vote to support with the modifications as discussed. Uh, <coughs> Article three. Okay. All right. Any further discussion? No. Oh, I'm good. All right. All those in favor? Aye. Unopposed. Good one. Uh, um, Tricom, I, I just want to let you guys know we're we're still on agenda, agenda item number one. It's probably going to be about maybe 20 minutes or a half hour. I apologize for the, the delay, but this is just taking a little longer than we anticipated, I think, when we scheduled you guys, so. I forgot there were other warrant articles. <laughs> Pick the other ones up quicker. It's like Dolly. Spent an hour on that one. Yeah. Uh, okay, so Article 4 is to see if the town will vote to raise and appropriate and transfer available funds from such money that is may be necessary to operate the park department. This is just the... Yep. They're going to ask for a transfer of 50000 from their retained earnings uh, for the John Pond restrooms okay. for capital projects. Okay. I'll vote to support Article 4. Make a motion. Second. All those in favor, aye. Aye. All right. Unanimous. Article 5 is to see if the town will vote to raise and appropriate and or transfer from available funds such sums of money as may be necessary to operate the landfill transfer station. That will be um, a transfer of 8000 from retained earnings to pay um, the annual property and liability insurance. I was able to get three years coverage for the price of two. So. I'd only budgeted for one year, so the third year will be they'll, the town will save around eight thousand dollars. Did you want the finance committee voting for each article? Could we, could yes. we, do, we skip, did, do you vote for four? Yeah, yes, we did, yes. We did already. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. yep. Wow. Just off, off subject, restaurants. was the hazardous waste day successful? Uh, yes. Okay. I make the mo make like, uh, like to make a motion to support uh, Article Five. Okay. Any discussion? No. All right. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, six to see if the town will vote to rescind the unissued amounts amount of bonds relative to the construction of an elevated water storage tank and pump station, authorized by vote of the town, taken under Article Eighteen of the town meeting of June 15, 2009. How much is that? It's approximately 1.1 million. It was uh, the interest that um, DEP forgave on. We never borrowed the money, so it's just sitting as unissued debt, and the water tower is sold. So we the, want to remove. Yeah, it. there's no money. There's involved. no money there. No, just no. canceling. Yeah. yeah, just canceling the debt. Uh, I'd like to make a motion to support Article Six. Second. All those, all those uh, in favor. Aye. Aye. Article 7 is to see if the town <coughs> will vote to rescind the unissued bond relative to the construction of the water line to the town office building authorized by a vote of the town taken under Article 6 of the town meeting of June 13, 2005. That was 250000 and uh, we borrowed to run the water line down to the town office building. It came in under budget at, uh, I want to say 246 I think it's four or five thousand dollars in outstanding debt. 
that we never used, so Doesn't we're never going to issue it. So we have to vote to rescind it. Well, are we going to have those amounts? I'm going uh, um, in your books. I will have okay. an explanation okay. of what each one is. Okay. Uh, I'd like to make a motion to support Article 7. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, Article 8 is the Massachusetts Water Pollution Abatement Trust Septic Management Program money. So what the Board of Health wants to do is put more money into this fund that they can then loan to people that are repairing septic systems. So they borrow the money, what, 2%? Yes. And I think they loan it at 5%. Five. Yeah. And it's kind of just a revolving fund, more or less, right? Yeah. yeah as so they they want to raise the amount because they're anticipating uh, um, with Clark Shores potentially getting a, a private water source, a lot of renovations being done to septic systems, and they want to have resources to be able to loan people. So how much do we have right now? Oh, I don't 80, remember. 80, 000, 80, 000. We, grand we've done yeah. bond issues for yeah. 300000 and there's people keep repaying the loans. Mm -hmm. There's 89000 available right now to be lent. And how much, how many septic systems do we anticipate that is? Like what is it? Oh, average? I... Yeah, five, five, okay. six. Yeah, yeah. I, I, yeah not they that, four. I mean, they, they get more and more expensive. Right. I think with this, too, this isn't, um, I mean, this is money that we get. We borrow it at a low rate, but we, you know, we make a little bit of money on it. But it's really... The money just stays in the Yeah, park. it just kicks yeah. in around. But it's really more of a service to the community in the sense that we can access the money f through the state for yeah. the residents. It's just the ability to access the money. We're not actually... Right. We're, we're not going to ask for an note. authorization we're of a million. We're not doing a note for a million dollars with interest. Right. So we're not paying 2.5% even That's though we're not right. lending it out. That's right. So it's yeah. not sitting in an account somewhere earning nothing. Right. Correct. It's only yeah. a pre-authorization, basically. Okay. It doesn't affect our operating budget at all. Okay. Well. Yeah, it, it, it occurs outside of the budget. Got it. Just a sep separate idea that I've had and I've seen other towns do is we have so many private roads in town, maybe creating an account like this for mm -hmm. people on private roads to borrow such a big cost to maintain the road. I don't know if... I haven't heard of that. Heard of that Does that no. not get leaned, though? Isn't that the problem with it? Like... Where would we, could you lean it on their house? Yeah. What? If we had private road yeah, mo money, because yeah. like it goes on as a betterment. Yeah. Right. Sewer. Yeah, you have to. Mo so. Most of them, right, most of them have the, the associations. Obviously the big ones, the, the full assures and things like that, have what I call successful associations where they actually get collected money. And right. other, others, the ones that are usually in the poorer condition, don't have a successful association because they can't get anyone to Parker, for pay the money. Right. <laughs> even, even, right. A, even a successful yeah. people that are collecting yeah. enough money for landscaping and maybe not building up the funds. Yeah. It Be could cost 50 grand yeah. to pave, you know. Oh, yeah. Easy, yeah. Easy, yeah. So. yeah. Yeah. Be interested to know what, what towns you might be thinking of only yeah. because we have, like, I think 30 miles. Yeah. We have it 70 miles of accepted roads and 30 miles that. of unaccepted yeah, it, roads. It could be a, 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 into it. an opportunity yeah. for, for certain neighborhoods if they wanted to yeah. do an act. I've had yeah. a couple of people ask me about yeah. this. <coughs> I'll, I'll make a motion to support Article 8. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Article 9 is my perennial favorite. Let's lower that quorum from 100 to 25. <laughs> We'd start right on time. I spend twenty million dollars with twenty-five people. The thought, the, the thought with this is, is that there's really about seventy or eighty people that always go to town meeting. It probably used to be a hundred or hundred and twenty, but for one reason or another, there's less. Um, I think there's nothing more annoying to me, and this is a personal pet peeve, of starting town meeting late. And we typically start late, and we're on the phone, and we're calling, and we're harassing people to come to town meeting that really should just be there anyway. Well, do you really need me? Yeah, we really need you. That's why I'm calling you 20 minutes after the quorum, you know, after we were supposed to start. The idea with this is that I don't believe that 100 out of 7,000 voters is really any more statistically significant than 25 to make the decisions for the town. The other side of it is, is that. Hopefully, 
it would put some fear in people that I better get to town meeting because if not, 25 people will be deciding everything. So that's my thought on this. I also <laughs> wanted to put it on this one so we'd actually get yep. a quorum, hoping that maybe people would be <laughs> angry that it was on there and come and vote, that vote no. That was one of so. the most contentious uh, that, articles that, that like two years ago. That happened the last, not the so last mad meeting, about but it. a couple it's of like meetings before that. Yeah. Well, I would we, vote against it. But I don't mind it being on there if it yeah. gets the voters there. I say we raise it to a thousand. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Right? No budget. There you go. Don't have any meetings. No, people show up if it's a thousand. Yeah. Yeah. Two years ago, we couldn't have a meeting. Really, and, and I went to Freetownstown meeting asked. though. Um, the last one. No, I think it's twenty-five. Twenty-five. Freetown. But there had to have been two hundred people there. Ten. Oh, is it ten? No. Special. Yeah, whatever it is. But, no. There but it's like people. that was a contentious you know, was, meeting. No, they never go. It, it, it was a contentious mob, meeting. Though. I mean, people were voting to change things I left think, and right. Um, I think right. that I think the lower number helps us start on time. I think the same people are going to come whether they whether the number is 100 or 25. But with 25, we can we can hit the ground running. So. But if 70 people come, why can't we just go to 70 and see how that goes? Because you might get 68. Um, <laughs> All right, then we call again. waiting there. I don't know. I just went with 25. So, yeah. That's so, so See, that, that strikes that the fear of 25 people. Yeah. I think we tried 60 last time. It's the fear factor. Time. The lower the number, the, the greater the fear factor. Well, just go down to one and be done with it. Um, <laughs> three. <laughs> three. <laughs> three. Like, this three is selectmen. Now we just and the town crazy. moderator, four. Yeah. Well, do you guys want to vote so we can keep going here? Uh, does anyone want to make a motion on this? Oh. Okay. What if none of us? I don't want it. All right, I'd like to make you a motion, make a motion that we all, don't approve. <laughs> that we don't approve. No, no. Uh, make a motion to approve it and then vote no. You always vote in the. You always make the motion in the affirmative. No, Even if I don't want to. No, no that's, right? that's that's that's, that's good how you etiquette. It. Don't. It's in that book if you read it enough. <laughs> <laughs> we don't have time to read it. To, we have to, to say that article. you want to, no, no, no. You, you're you going to put it as a motion in a second and make a recommendation. Oh, yeah, okay, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. okay. I would always like to make, I got you. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. fine. Semantics. I'd like to make a motion to support Article 9. Anybody for a second? A second. Any discussion? None of us want it. All right. All those in favor? Opposed? Aye. Aye. All right. There we go. All right. Good. The motion carried. I think doing Maybe that every like year, though, <laughs> <laughs> doing that every year, though, it might bring people out. So, <laughs> the thought was we wanted to have a quorum because, you no, know, where is it? The road acceptance should. The road do acceptance. Yeah, should yeah. Do it. yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, right. Put that last one. In. Article 10. So this is the zoning change. Um, there's a map that accompanies this. This is Staples Shore Road, which was zoned business years ago there was a business down there and no houses were down there and I remember that um, fondly. Isn't that where the, the track was? So yeah this, this is, is where um, the old Lions Club was. This is um, track. Oh, okay. Yeah. This is you know facing north. That's the old Lions Club. This uh, is the, the old settlement. Lions Club was here. I got you. And there was a racetrack here. You know a quarter oh, okay. mile track. I think it's a quarter mile. Cars. Cars. Race cars. Yeah. 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 Cars. <laughs> Really? It's like well, it's not bad. It's a track. Dread track. There's that like sign there. for uh, Captain, Captain Joe book, Hooker. Right. That's gone though. Camp okay. Joe Hooker. That's gone. That's a, it's sign's a, gone. Yeah, right. It's uh, I think the sign's still there. Mullen. So no. obviously this yeah, all built Mullen out. Mullen Hill's still there, but um, there's like a sign. Residential. Mm -hmm. yep. So there's no there's no point the, the the current use or I should say that the predominant use in there is business is not business is residential so it would be this whole section um, property properties numbered one through ten that would be rezoned residential the planning board had a hearing on this they recommended uh, or they recommend approval of it what's the feedback then from <coughs> the, the people about, bring this to the planning board well, what about no, the, no, what we, about the Mellon Hill Church uh, school. school. Does that make a difference? Yeah. No. School. It doesn't. They can be in business, they can be in residential, they can be where they're 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 from okay. It. okay. And then lot eight, does that have street access? That's the old track that they claim is unused. No, they that, claim that's it's actually, unusable. It's wet development. That will so, so that will have okay. houses on in about five years after yeah. we forget oh, no, it's, it's wet. It's wet. It's all wet. Let okay. us know. <laughs> <laughs> 
Can I get that in writing? <laughs> And does this change the valuation of the property from changing from business to they already the, They already have houses on that. Based on the it, it, it actually it gives them, there's an advantage to the property owners to have it residential and have a home on it because if it's zoned business, the setbacks are different. Yep. They're stricter. So this gives them more flexibility with, with the use of their property. So that was really the, the reason why we wanted to do it. Or I should say that Nate recommended this. Um, so, because even if to put a shed on their property because they're in a business zone, they have to apply for a special permit. Yeah, I mean, it's just stuff like that yeah. for him. It's way easier. I'd like to make a motion to support Article Ten. All those in favor? Aye. 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 So Article Eleven is another zoning bylaw change, or I should say, a zoning bylaw change. This is um, revising some language that um, these these two there's A and B so these geez they sound like zinc and that's exactly what I was thinking when was this last explained oh it was zinc and he fumbled around with it and here I am I can't even do it ah. Oh. based on a recommendation from the building commissioner. So accessory buildings or structures located within a required front side or rear setback will require a special permit. Um, I don't even remember what the details are of this one. It's sad, I'm it having is a zinc moment. On the smaller lots, um, if someone wants to put a shed on their, most oh, of the sheds, Oh, that's what it is. The so, setbacks are. Say you have a 5,000 square foot lot and you have 20 foot setbacks, okay? It's called setback for a reason. Right? Go ahead. And you have a house on that lot. Where do you put your shed? You don't get one. You don't get a shed. We're playing mash right. now. Yeah. So <laughs> this gives some flexibility in allowing sheds in this condition or these circumstances <laughs> I don't even remember how to with play. the Zoning Board of Appeals granting a special permit. Yeah. Wow. And the abutters are notified, right? Yeah, yeah. so they'll have a hearing and if okay. if they go through the process and they answer the, the right questions and it is, uh, everybody likes it, then they get what they want. Good? Yeah. I'd like to make a motion to support Article 11. Any discussion? No. Aye. All those in favor? Sorry. <laughs> yeah, you know the bill. Aye. Aye. 12, 13, and 14 are all to accept Cedar Pond Estates. There's three roads in there. That's what 12, 13, and 14 are. I make a motion. Uh, how, how did. did oh, yeah, let me, yeah, let me give the backstory on that one. Um, Jeremy went out and inspected the. the roadways and they all conform to his expectations of the punch list items that he had provided them over the summer so they the developer and the pro and or the property owners have done everything he was looking for and he signed off on it that they're they're ready to go okay so if you accept them now you'll you'll be calling their for support. the winter that's the yes point. That's, that's why really they're the trying point. to do it I think this development bit has, has been in the works for 16 years. <laughs> there wasn't enough. Yeah. Is that the one you, up, that way? Down the end, Online. right, down by Bridal after T.L. Yeah. Edwards, yeah, yeah. yeah. across so from Bridal Path. Right. The money was put aside, Step but because it took 16, we usually get twice as much money as needed, mm -hmm. but because it took 16 years to do the development, mm -hmm. and they argued with the Ron developer. Terowitz, so so instead of 20 bucks a barrel, it went to 100 bucks a barrel. So Ron when it got to 50 bucks change. a barrel, they had enough money to do the roads. The bank. So they got to do the roads. I knew was going to be trouble in a minute. All right. Okay. Uh, I'd like to make a motion to support Articles 12, 13, and 14. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Do we have to do those individually or? No, no, that's fine. You just, well, you said it all in one motion. Yeah, yeah that's yeah, fine. Right. Do we have a do we have a consulting engineer working with the planning board to review these plans, or is it just relying on Jeremy? It was. Uh, it, it always been. But that's only for the design. That's not for. 
Yeah, I don't think the consultant he reviews. Do inspection. Yeah, I'm going to get on that. Again. Should be approved. Yes. yes, we should have peer That's review services. That's why it's got to be my target of. Should we go ahead and approve the board? Yeah. Can you do that? Yeah. yeah. Make a motion to approve the meeting minute or the. Uh, yeah, before we. I've had the chance to review. I remember one year ago exactly what we discussed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I'd like to make a motion. Did you make it? No, you can oh. go ahead and do it. I'd like to make a motion to approve the meeting minutes for November 7th, 2016, June 12th, 2017, June 19th, 2017, and July 24th, 2017. And uh, I, I will second the motion. Um, Katie can vote on these, right? Even though she wasn't here for one of them. Uh, usually, usually rule of necessity. From the one. Rule in this. Well, you'd only need two, vote. honestly, to vote yeah. in the affirmative, anyway. Yeah. So, all right. So you can abstain or vote. You there. Put two. I'll abstain since I wasn't there. Okay. You, you weren't, weren't there for July. one of Yeah, you were, at, you, were at, you were at all of them except You were at all except November. Yeah. You're right. all up to date on your minutes now. Yes, great. So clearly you read them. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Twice. <laughs> right. I'd like to make a motion to adjourn the finance committee meeting. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Thank you. See you, See you Monday night. Yep. Oh, yes. Norm, thank you. Sure. Thank Is FinCon meeting before the meeting on Monday? Because oh, I know that my work I posted them right to 7. Do you want me to? Well, <laughs> one of the things that we wanted Oops. to talk about from regional FinCom was to talk about potentials for regional FinCom with the finance committee. So maybe if you want to post them anyways, it, 6.30 if that's possible, and if you happen to have a conversation, we can have one at least at that point. Okay. So that while we're sitting up there on stage, yeah. 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 burning up under the sun. Joe's, so yeah, Joe's up for that one. Okay. Dan should be there. Okay. Katie, you good, right? Yeah, I'll be there one day. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks again. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so agenda item number two is to meet with Tricom Health Corporation to discuss the host community mm -hmm. agreement and recreational marijuana. Welcome. Welcome. Sorry for the delay. <laughs> it's really cold. Oh, that's easy. That's an easy decision. You gonna give me this again? No. Uh, Is it well, you? so uh, we have a we have a funny relationship. There's two law firms that are partners. I'm actually joining Vicente this week, and uh, okay. the, 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 I like my logo better, but it's going away. Um, <laughs> so my name is Valerio. I, I'm a par um, Phil Silverman's one of the associates in our office. He was here before. Um, so yeah, we're here for Tricom. I think we supplied a copy of uh, sort of a template host mm -hmm. community agreement that contemplates both medical and adult use. Um, the reason we brought in the adult use or recreational portion now is my understanding was that the uh, the last hearing, it sort of the board had brought up the possibility of us kind of being uh, the partner to do cannabis, both medical and adult use. And so we thought we'd put, build it into the host community agreement. Under the law that the governor signed a few months ago, host community agreements are, in fact, mandatory. Uh, it, the Department of Public Health has not been absorbed. The Department of Public Health's medical marijuana function has not been absorbed by the Cannabis Control Commission yet, but it will be in the coming months. And uh, and at that point, even for medical, the host community agreement will be mandatory. And so the agreement that we laid out for you um, author authorizes or the, the maximum amount that's allowed statutorily is 3% on each one of the activities. So it's 6% there, and then the town would get another 3% off the top from the local option tax. Um, uh, Alex, yeah. Yeah, so, sorry. When he says 6%, it's 3% on medical, 3% on recreational, yeah. and then an additional local tax of 3% on the recreational as well. Right, when yeah. we enact yeah. that. When, yeah. Yes. Right. It should probably be the Springtown meeting, so we should make note of that. And so we would encourage, you know, the. So we'll, the reason this sort of came up for Tricom is because we're going through the special permit process for medical now, and we said, you know what, while we're designing, we don't we don't have the regs yet for uh, adult use, obviously, and we don't know what the application process is going to look like. But while we're designing, we kind of want to think about, you know, whether we're, you know, a little extra space, whether you know, you need to have. The law the governor signed allowed for co-location of medical and adult use, which was different than what the voters passed, um, and. and uh, 
so while we're designing, you're supposed to have a, a virtual separation. We don't know exactly what that's going to look like, but we're trying to figure it out. And so whatever plans we put forward. Yeah, maybe. Or maybe it's just a different screen on the cash register. I mean, who knows? You know, it's uh, yeah. we don't know. We'll be looking. No, yeah. we'll be looking. We want the 6%. Yeah, exactly. I mean, so it's, it's significant revenue. Going to Clear Pond Park with your resident license or your non-resident license. Yes. Yeah, yes. it might be like that. Who knows? And, only, you know? and I'll go on Friday nights. I only get sick on Friday nights, too. <laughs> I, don't, I don't get it. I don't get it. I feel ill on Friday nights. That's because the week was rough. That's right. That's right. The select ones made us. You know, our, what we really want to propose is we want to establish a true partnership with the town. You know, you had mentioned that, you know, eventually this facility will maximize um, and we do will want to expand in those opportunities. And so what we're, we're really honing in because we want to establish a relationship with the community, uh, with the town. So not only are we positioning ourselves, right now we're looking at a potential expansion on the current location, um, and that would be much, uh, it would make more justification, more sense to justify the expansion if we are secured with the adult use in place. Um, not to mention that, look, at the end of the day, we don't know where adult use is going to go. Massachusetts is the first state to really have a full-fledged adult use program, so it's hard to estimate what that could be in New England. Yeah. In New England, so um, the truth of the matter is, you know, we may potentially everything we produce in the town of Lakeville could potentially move through just Lakeville alone, and that would require us to continue to expand so we could feed um, the medical other medical dispensaries. But I do want to be clear that Lakeville is our first, our first location. And we are moving forward. We've made the investments necessary. We're preparing for special permitting. Um, and we're just trying to see where we are because the biggest risk I don't want to face is we, you know, someone had mentioned the last time that uh, you don't want to see a, part a, a licensee separate medical and recreational um, was someone had, had noted that. And so I, d I don't want to put our business in a position where we're pursuing medical and then the recreational someone else comes in to be in a different location right someone it, else it, gets it it's very sure. dangerous yeah. right it's dangerous for our business um and it wouldn't make the investors happy <laughs> sure sure you know? and right and because i think yeah. that the, the money is really as, as john has alluded to with everybody we've met with that we want to see the recreational piece because we think that that's going to be a much bigger market obviously than just the medical it's going especially, to be a giant. Yeah, uh, especially in the beginning for the town. I mean, people are going to be coming from all over. I don't think in 2018 there'll even be 10 uh, adult use dispensaries open in the Commonwealth, and, pro and, right. the, and the next year there might not even be another 10. I mean, and, and Lakeville's yeah. uniquely positioned, you know, right. on, you, ge you, geographically. You, Fall you know, it's hard. It's hard for me to lots of big cities. Um, even Tom. calculate what a summer right. could look like with commuters going through Lakeville to Cape Cod or what that could be. Well, they might have to take a different train or something. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, there's... We the, argue with the train. There's a lot of, <laughs> you know, we're seeing a lot of benefits we can add by including that piece. So that's why we right. did include it. It reduces our risk. It improves what you want to achieve in this town and, you know, significantly. Yeah. yeah, so the, there's some issues though. So we're, we're working on special permit and the, perm, the special permit that will now will hopefully will be awarded will be strictly for medical. So I mean, because we're not right. there yet, right. you know, and yeah. so while we can sort of talk about the potential for these more customers and whatnot, you know, the, the criteria for special permit, we're going to be talking about parking and traffic and making sure that, you know, we have, you know, a, a good analysis of what that's going to be. So it, while it's fun for us to sit here and speculate about like the great revenue that's going to come to the town if we get to do it adult use um, the the Board of Appeal the special permit granting authority um, I'm hoping that they're not going to put our feet to the fire saying oh but you're gonna have all this for adult use later on because right now the permit and the allowed use under the permit will be for medical because I, I don't see how under your current zoning bylaw we would actually be able to apply for a permit for adult use so um, so we'd have to go back to the special permit granting authority for an amendment I suppose um, when you guys do your I guess it's Springtown meeting right. you'll and, and we can work with you too. I mean, so our office, we actually co authored question four from last November, and this is all we do is cite cannabis businesses. Uh, so we represent about a third of the registrations that are out there from open to brand new applicants. Um, so if you guys have any questions now, 
or when you're when we're working on zoning and we, we rezone Harvard Square for cannabis, you know. So like this is what we do. So we, we'd be happy to work with mm -hmm. the town also. It's actually helpful to know because we, our town has a zoning bylaw review committee, which is made up of people from planning board, zoning board, our building commissioner, who's also the zoning enforcement officer. Um, there's a, a local land use attorney. Um, I'm on that as a Great. board of selectmen. So we really have a good mechanism to get zoning issues fast track for town meetings so it would be definitely would be something we want to I would, I'd be I'd be yeah. you know be ha very happy to it's it's funny you looked at the the you know we just hope it passes that's all I mean town meeting two-thirds vote uh, for a zoning amendment um, you know we're gonna have to probably do a, a little bit of PR campaign well, the good the good thing with this group is is that if everybody on this this board believes in it they go back and they sell it to their committee great and that's really yeah. why we created this this group because as you know the two-thirds uh, can be challenged. process is tough so <laughs> we wanted to we wanted to have a group that that if if it made sense it was going to be a slam dunk because everybody was going to advocate for it and if it didn't make sense we wanted to make sure that the process delivered something that everybody believed in so yeah. great. It's, it's really a great way to get stuff done. When do you have, do you have any anticipation as to when you would be potentially breaking ground? Well, you're not breaking yeah. ground, but doing the I, renovations. I can, so. I can run you through yeah. our projected timelines. Yeah. Obviously, winter puts a halt on things. And the square footage to it's address. Yeah. yeah, the current building is 20,000 square feet. Okay. Yeah. Um, <coughs> currently, we are starting to lay things down with a civil engineer. We're expecting we can add potentially 4,000 square feet onto the back of the building for expansion and then go up a little bit higher. So that could significantly help us with our production numbers mm -hmm. as well. Um, you know, even though the f square footage is only increasing by 20% roughly, I think we can increase our production by 30 to 40%. Um, you know, the other reason is we do want to move forward with the LED technology and maximize the height of this building. And that's another reason, because th that capital investment is almost two times as large as the standard method of, of growing indoor. Um, so th we're hoping that expansion will happen. And if it does, um, we want to break ground by April 1st, obviously, as soon as the uh, allowance to break ground right. is there. But we're doing everything. We'll have all of our architectural and engineering work done and ready before winter's over. So that way, when we can, we will break ground. We're expecting if we start in April, we'll, we should be done with construction by October. And with the new potential regulations that are coming in, uh, we won't be required to start from a seed. And Val can talk to this more. And, but, but that would save us another two months in time, because we'll be able to start from a clone. Mm -hmm. And by with those savings, we're anticipating we could probably conservatively open our doors by February of 19. The, the 20,000 square feet, is that the grow facility part of it? Or are you no. taking five? What are you taking for an office and what are you taking for grow? Yeah, so in that 20,000 square feet, 10,000 of it is for okay. growing. Okay. Because okay. if you, if you are familiar that got us, with the building. That got us to about a 15 million yeah, revenue size. Right. But with the potential expansion and going in the LED route, we think we can maybe get 20, 25 million dollars worth of product right. production okay. yep. in there. Yep. Um, that expansion is a significant value add that we hope we'll be able to get when we go in front of the committee. Right. And we're hope you know I mean and this is all with the zoning board you know moving us through the process of obviously the faster we get through the process. Yeah. I mean I've had in Georgetown I think it took us six months to get a special permit we had so many hearings on it it was insane and other times we get it in two hours you know so i, I mean it's just it's going to be up to the zoning board too you're, to you're technically in the right area now we've already authorized that they can do this medical zone in that special permit medical. by cba right yep. mm -hmm. but that that's it without, without changing the outside perimeter which I, I think we generally support but when i say generally support it's really up to them to support it but you can start your business without that addition, or is that addition key to this business? It's not key. Okay. We could start it sooner. The other thing to keep in mind is we need to upgrade the electrical mm -hmm. uh, capabilities of that building, which would require us to 
dig up some ground to and and so no matter what we still have to wait out the winter yeah. to to begin Right. But again, there's all these architectural and engineering right. design work that's okay. going to take months anyway. It almost seems like a natural progression of how things will lay out. But there might be site plan approval also, you know, given that you know, what we're doing outside. I don't know if we're going to have to right. restrict Right, but it's not lot. significant. I mean, a 4,000 square outside of a significant building, the building's 180,000 square right. feet, I think. But I think we require site plan approval yeah. anyway. Right, no, 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 you do. But, so but the addition the to the building... Well. Is 4,000 square being added to 100 and... It's a 20,000 square foot I think foot the building, building yeah. Oh, oh, okay. It's a 20,000 square foot building, and which we is, would expand it four more thousand square feet. Which is, what's the address? 475 Kenneth Welch. Which is the Tracy Imports. Yes. Okay. It's like a three and a half acre parcel. Yeah. So okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I got it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Okay. And so we would use that. You yeah. know, if you, you drive by the building, your you can engineer was in here uh, a week or two. Yes, ago. and he's here tomorrow as well. Yeah. Okay. So I guess what we're looking for now. I mean, we can't really get a lot of certainty. Right. We don't have regs. You don't have a bylaw. But I, I, I think it was just for us to sort of figure planning purposes, I'm kind of to hear from you guys and have this conversation, this dialogue, and sort of realize that there isn't going to be, at least hopefully from the board, some assuming that we follow state law, local requirements, you know, we're buttoned up operation, that we're not going to expect a ton of opposition from the Board of Selectmen at the very least. And that, that's kind of the sense. That's what we were looking to find out, basically. No, I mean, like I said earlier, we, we've encouraged applicants to, to go the recreational route because we think that that's going to bring more revenue to the town. Right. I think if you're going to have uh, an operation locate in your tent, well, to back up a step, I think we all have basically shared the view that if the voters of Massachusetts legalized uh, medical and recreational use, there's really an opportunity for a town to, um, to, for lack of a better term, take advantage of the circumstances. Well, I think, um, for, you know, from a pure economic standpoint, this is an industry, there haven't been many industries in the last decade or two that actually bring retail revitalization and right. true economic right. stimulation the, like this one. There's could. there's so much potential with this. And to, to ban it in your town is a bit naive considering any operation can deliver. Right. And there's cannabis anyway, right? It's I everywhere. Mean, it's, it's everywhere so, anyway. It's the, right. Yes, it's, I, I think so it is I naive. So I think having, having it done in a way that conforms with zoning, having it done in a way that everybody's happy with from from a, a company going through that process on, on a site is is the best we can hope for for local control in terms of hours of operation and all of that stuff. You know, that's what the zoning board sure. is for. Um, but I think w we're absolutely have supported every every mm -hmm. reasonable competent applicant that has come in front of us. That's, that's a key word. <laughs> <laughs> Some of them write their applications in crayon. Hopefully we're the only yeah. ones, right? <laughs> <laughs> we're the no, only competent no. We have this, one there, there also. Are few, there are a few good ones that we've yeah. met with. Now, not everybody is as together or, or as far along as, as you are not in the process. Not really funded. That's yeah. number one. Did, did, you buy, did you buy the building? Well, we're closing on December 5th, I oh, believe okay. the date is. Oh, and then an update, I don't know if you heard the They've been granted a registration by the Commonwealth for siting here, so they actually have a PCR. So they're, in yeah. some technical sense, they actually are a registered marijuana dispensary, even yeah. though they're not open yet. But they've gotten that far. Because we're talking about a host agreement, and because Mitzi yep. and Aaron are a specialist, Mitzi's our specialist on that. But it's the, my other job. The what are the what are the yeah, real estate right? taxes on that building today? About I don't know. know. I don't know the answer I, to I, that. I, I should have looked it up, but we've got four seventy-five. But if if this is just a medical facility out of the out of the we can say out of the 20,000 square feet how much is medical i get it, it has to be medical today because recreational is approved but uh this payment in lieu of taxes or you know the host agreement so we have to we have to address that while we understand that the three percent numbers as as we grow and i certainly would want an agreement that says if the three percent becomes we'll say a five percent max by the state in years coming that we escalate it to that number we're, we're looking that whatever the state allows us to to get we would put in the host agreement if today it's 
three percent in and in twelve months they say it's gonna be five percent. You guys well, no, no, they'll just for profit. Yeah, their state. Well, they, they they will, but in the in the yeah, agreement, I'd want to cover towns. that the. I think you'll see an increase in tax, but right. So right, but too. but that that and also the tax taxability. If it's a medical facility, what's your proposal and what's your address? so uh, yeah so. Um, the, the medical portion, so the idea, I think what you're alluding to is yeah. this nonprofit status yes. of the medical. Yes. And That's so we're actually, exactly. we're Chapter 180 nonprofits under Massachusetts law, but we do not get a 501c3 designation from the IRS. So we're not a public charity. So there's no need for a pilot or payment in lieu of taxes. We actually pay our full boat in taxes. Actually, we have tax hurdle that we have to overcome this 280e the, like limitation on our deductions and it's yeah. a real tough thing to do so um so we have no tax benefit we pay our full boat in property taxes and and also including the equipment inside and everything else so um that's not an issue whether but we're can a non-profit you or but a for-profit can profit. you change that without our approval uh the non-profit to the yeah. for-profit so i you know and i don't I believe your zoning yeah. bylaw defines an RMD as a as a nonprofit, yeah, right. and so now it is. Right. And, now they can be. And yeah, so the, recently the the Department of Public Health has author, authorized these companies to go for profit, and unfortunately, 80 percent of the zoning bylaws throughout the Commonwealth define these as nonprofits. So if you that. switch over, it actually it it would prohibit us from even citing here. So potentially, when we do a bylaw review uh, for in Springtown meeting, if I fortunate enough to participate to some extent we can talk about maybe amending your medical bylaw I don't know strictly speaking whether it's something that uh, under during the special permit you could have waived because it's a definition in the bylaw of the business as opposed to a special permit criteria so I don't know if the zoning board unilaterally could waive that requirement or the building inspector could do and it's something that we have to sort of figure out um, right I want to make sure if, if we sign an agreement and, and you, you pay your taxes today but then you somehow or not you don't have to pay the taxes in the future we didn't write anything in the agreement I'm, to compensate for that I'm pretty sure the draft we sent you actually does yeah. address that and says that we'll yeah. continue paying property taxes yes okay. so that's in there and, yeah. and so no matter what if let's it's say only the escalator yeah. that I would put in there and that that I'm not escalating and I'm escalating it only if the state well, so allows it. Just to you know address that real quick, I yeah. mean, what we're here for tonight actually is some sort of business certainty and I, I, yeah. it would be difficult to write in that agreement that we would be willing, that we would agree now to an open-ended amount no matter what the state allowed, right? Because what if they what if they just make <laughs> I, it? I could try that though. Yeah, we could try, but I'm, I mean, it's, that, that's, that's where I was going. That's sort of the opposite. Yeah, Short-term gains, <laughs> long-term, we can't exist. I need so. money for the schools. Well, we so. want to give it to you, but <laughs> yeah. like an open-ended agreement to pay the maximum allowed. What if what if there is no max? max you know, if it's a, and so I don't think we could actually agree to that. And in, in right. but but look, we're here. We're gonna, we're gonna they're gonna spend millions of dollars on this building. You know, so again, we're, it's the partnership. <laughs> That I do want yes. to emphasize. Yeah, so no, and, and, and I think we're on we're on board for that. We we want to make sure that we don't write an agreement that's in the, the not in the interest of the town. So this is a this is a new agreement that our office did. We yep. I think we probably negotiated. I, I negotiated the first one I think with Mayor Koch and Quincy years ago, and we've been doing them all over the Commonwealth. This is sort of a new twist on the agreement. Are you a Copeland and Page town? Yeah. You are. Okay, so they probably, they don't have this one yet. And you know, this will be new well, for they them. Will. They will. <laughs> and then they'll find, you know, they, this is the uh, they they they're, they haven't been uh, the biggest friends to this industry thus far. I don't know if you've communicated with them yet about Kay Doyle was a friend she of the was, industry. She was. But she she's left. A, yeah, well, she left to work at the DPH exactly. and she was the That's attorney right. for I love Kay and I are close. I love yeah. her and She was our town council. Oh, she was. Yeah. Yeah. She's yeah. just a gem. I love yeah. Kay and she now she's on the Cannabis Control Commission. She's one of the five. So yeah. uh, I couldn't have a better person over there because the, all the growing pains that medical went through, she knows them all, and she's not going to let the CCC have a, make this all the same mistakes. So she's fantastic. Um, so anyway, um, this is this is sort of a new a, a new attempt at mm -hmm. coming up with this post uh, the governor re, you know signing the adult use mm -hmm. bill. So uh, we'll see what happens with KMP. Um, <laughs> I, I, don't, I, 
I'm not, I don't think we're asking for a vote or anything. We just sort of wanted to chat through these issues with you and see if you had any questions for us and really sort of get this sense of certainty that we, we can feel comfortable <coughs> right. at least right. making some tentative planning for adult use as that right. moves forward. I mean, I, I think <laughs> the point about the nonprofit and our existing bylaws is a worthy one. So we want to make a note of that for the Zoning Bylaw Review Committee. And then maybe when we next meet, we can talk about but yeah, yeah so yep. you're ahead of you got the notes yeah. on that so that's a big that's a big um heads up for us to get to get organized with that great so great and, and you guys tell me if i'm wrong whether you think that the you know the zoning enforcement officer can decline to enforce that that provision i don't know if <laughs> you know we're sort of figuring this out in different cities and towns right now I, I think this is all brand new rather you know? fix the, the bylaw right. yeah because change the, the definition because that's what happened the last town meeting is most of those bylaw changes were definition changes right. and Anyways, that's that's part of what we do is we you know he's a guy who's enforcing it all and he'll come to us and say this doesn't apply to anything in the town this definition is yeah. outdated and Let's this is what it. we should fix and then we kick it around and we come up with a solution to it and, and we put it forward and, and um, you know, we've, we've had Thank we're batting a thousand at this point. We've been doing this for a few town meetings. Great. So I can tell you guys are actually incredibly like cooperative and you know functional i mean i'm in front of so many different towns where it's like just a complete disaster don't bother you know? don't bother us <laughs> no i mean it though I, I, like, I, some towns i'm like are, am i really witnessing this right now is this you know so this is sort of a pleasure to watch you guys hustle through your warrant and i mean that this is uh i, I have a good feeling for for tricom here i mean it yeah well, you came in on the tail end of the contentious uh, part <laughs> with the budget transfers but <laughs> That's always right. what everybody yeah. argue, argues about. Right. The, the, well, they the say money. we're generally in support. Of it. Certainly in selectmen, I, I, I do want to say that I voted against legalizing marijuana. However, it's here, it so is. so I'm going to try to maximize what I can for the town to 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 make sure that we both have a satisfactory agreement. So that's and that's you, our job. And a, sort of our opening salvo on the template agreement was the max we could possibly offer so we're not, we I saw that I saw like, that you know we didn't try to nickel and dime you down and try to you know we yeah. did have some one group come in and, and yeah, propose like one. something and I said listen we're not gonna yeah <laughs> we want the max so we're not even gonna yeah talk to you because right. other people have offered that so we don't want to treat one group differently than another and if if one group is willing to give the maximum and that's the bar has been raised right. to that so um, right yeah i mean to that point you'll have those that offered the maximum now saying well why'd you give them less and then right right you can't you know, be, right. be a competitive be disadvantage too right. you know and but, but what yeah. are you yeah. willing to pay the town besides your real estate taxes in the year 2018 because you're not going to be selling were you, when will you be selling? 2019. Right, 2019. 2019. Yeah. Between so permitting, construction, year. cultivation. Might right, so you'll have a year of, of no no income, yeah. none in. No revenue. No revenue in 2018. Correct. What's your proposal uh, for that year? I mean, given that we're not open yet, it's probably not much. I gotta say. I mean, I don't know if it's. I don't think it's not much. I mean, it's, it's, the police of the city need something. I think it's the investment we're making into the property. No, too. I don't think that's reasonable, honestly. I mean, I think it's funny because if you look at any other business, like Amazon, oh, well, here's this tiff we can give you, and we're gonna give you all this stuff. Yeah. But no marijuana for is just saying, what can you give us? Yeah, it's the opposite. Right. And it's and it's like for no added value. Yeah. Better paying nothing. jobs. You get nothing out of. But if you take you the get medical, no, yeah. no benefit. There's not. You, you and, grow, and grow it here. Yeah. Yeah. It is. Yeah. What yeah. if you grow your product here, and you open a medical in in Concord, Mass? What what revenue side? Well, that would we be would we be getting because you're not having any sales. In the town of so Lake. initially, what we proposed was a production. That, that's really where yeah. I'm partially yes. heading. Yep. I hear what you're is saying. The, is they don't have revenue, they they may never have to have revenue. Well, in Lakeville. The, the, so actually, so the letter of support 
that you issued was issued on the basis that we were cultivating, producing, and yes. dispensing in Lakeville. And if we were to change one of those activities to another municipality, we'd have to do what they call a change of location with the Department of Public Health. And that's uh, the $10,000 fee that, but they'll also call you guys and say, oh, well, they're not dispensing there anymore. Does your letter still stand? And you would say no, because we want to have the 3% of medical. So we've committed to doing that and a change of location. And I'm sure that before they gave us PCR, they verified with you that, we, that you had issued yeah. that letter. Right? Have, That's what they do. Have you requested any other medical facilities, retail facilities for this company? Yes. What other locations? They are, sorry, they're uh -huh. Auburn yeah. and Ashland. But as of right now, we take my, you can take my word, Lakeville is our first starting location for dispensing, both on the medical and recreational side. And until we actually reach that point where we feel we have the extra product that can't be sold through Lakeville, we cannot open our second or third dispensary. These would be dispensaries in, in today's market for medical only correct and would move into recreational if recreational was approved and if then the town what allowed happens it. to then what and if the town allowed it right you see yeah. lot Auburn right, because Auburn I have a problem with Auburn you Auburn 25 million dollars worth of product in Lakeville and sell it in Auburn, Auburn banned National. recreational in, in other places uh, yeah. so we would never be able to do recreational in Auburn at least not for a number no, of years no but, but medical's got to be a third of the business right. so I mean you're really looking for a cultivation piece right if well possible. right it's, right if it's not, not, going, not it's today going but, right. but i'm going to so, be looking for a so initially, cultivation piece initially we did first, initially yeah. we did propose a production per pound and yeah. uh on revenue yeah. the the regulations changed in the state that said three percent max yeah. so one of the things we proposed when we sent that host agreement last week in the email was we're happy to like say 1% of production, 2% of sales. Right. Right. We can we can move that 3% any way you yeah. feel most comfortable with. We just figured given the p opportunity and the potential on the sales that can happen in the town of Lakeville, we felt the most tax revenue you would generate is just putting it on sales. Or the most host yes, community. No, I, right. I absolutely agree as long as you don't cultivate here and we change well, we will the story be. that Auburn and Ashland which you've already your concern is we only that, start growing that here you and just then grow we a know. facility here right. and, and, and you sell everything everywhere else and three percent of sales in Lakeville is zero Right. Well, it wouldn't be, first of all, it won't be for adult use. So that 3% that plus the 3% at local option tax, that's six points off the top of adult use. And that's going to be quite a significant amount of money. But, right. but, but right. then medical also, like I said, we, our letter of support was about siting here. And if we were to do a change of location, they would check out with you. So we have to, we have to sell here, too. That's part so, of our so plan. So my only concern, once yep. again, is that they grow $25 million worth yep. of product here. Don't sell it, and 3% of our sales is Zippo. Right, but the production would be based upon what the cost. Well, so I mean, it's, it's untested, really. We don't right. know yet. It could be. Right. It could be. It could just be. I mean, what we're seeing is that a, a ten dollars per pound of production or something to that nature. Yeah. So we we you you're getting our support. But, sure. But the the, the question right. of. Uh, Your concern is how do we minimize the risk for the town for the if town. we only end up growing here? And right, you grow here, you have a big facility here, and uh, you sell it somewhere else, and we run an agreement three percent of sales. So, so I mean, I think the op the opportunity now is probably not resolve it right now, right. But, no. but but and oh, yeah, the no, issues yeah. right. the issues no, yeah. in flat. Right. I, I just wanted can, to know that yeah. the, is yep. it that issue of of what do we get while you're growing things for a year? As Aaron said, well maybe that's really not right because you're paying your taxes and I don't go to someone else and say give me three percent of your hundred million dollar business no I, I absolutely uh, get I the concern that. I mean we didn't we didn't we're not trying to no. be funny here no, or like know that. you know no. we, were just, we just tried to offer the max and but I, I, right. I get the concern right. and we'll no. do what we can if we want to tweak the agreement go back to the KMP folks maybe they'll have a, an idea of how to do it too I mean right. and what, we when can, does this have to be so is the state out do you have a deadline to do any of this no. Okay. Not okay. currently. Okay. Once the Cannabis Control Commission absorbs the Department of Public Health's oversight of uh, 
medical marijuana. Then what happens is actually Chapter 369 of the Acts of 2012, the medical marijuana law, goes away. And then the regulations, 105 CMR 725, those are authorized by that Acts of 2000, that Chapter 369. Those go away also. And it all goes under the, the regs that get put forth by the Cannabis Control Commission. And one of the parts of that is this law that requires a host community agreement is also put forth. And, and when do you think that, is there, I mean, is that a, is It that has a, to be done by the end of next year. The sense is oh, that, wow. the sense is it's gonna happen a lot sooner though, because the oh, DPH is sitting on about $9 million right now in cash, and the Cannabis Control Commission wants that money so they can start spending it. Okay. And so we think it's gonna happen a lot sooner. The, the uh, inspections officers for the DPH, they're all going to go start working at the Cannabis Control Commission, and they've been told that they're going to get 90 days notice before they move offices, and they haven't been given notice yet. Okay. So that, that tells us it's probably at least three well, months out, well, but who knows, you know. We have review this, and just my only really concern is what if it's just a growth facility? Yep. I, I, I get the idea you got to change. Address yeah. and right. they're going to no, call us on yeah. yeah, yeah, again, right. I, I, I hope right. I, I take part the yeah. partnerships very seriously. Yeah. I mean, yeah. we we're not trying to pull a bait and switch. We genuinely oh, no, see a lot of know, value. You no, know, if I no, thought you were, I wouldn't beat around the bush. Listen, yeah. Yeah. I can sense that. All sincerity, <laughs> you, if, if you for whatever reason market forces that are unbeknownst to you at this time, right. it's an unknown it, to everyone. That it makes more sense to just grow in Lakeville and sell in two other locations right. for your business then that's okay i mean i think that that's we'll just figure out a way to compensate the town for what we right, produce it's not, it's yeah. not yeah. to say that you know we we found that you were disingenuous no. now i mean <laughs> it's just like wherever, no. wherever this market no. takes you you have to right. follow right. follow that yeah, right. and we yeah. appreciate that and, so and 25 million is is only such a small percentage of the expected market size oh mass is going to be huge right so in Colorado in 2016, there were $440 million of medical sales and $850 million of adult use sales. There's 5.5 million people in Colorado. We have almost 7 million people in Massachusetts. And a much and more densely populated um, area. area. And our patient population is better because we have a catch-all that's anything, the doc any debilitating condition the doctor and patient agree upon. So we're, uh, the cannabis market in mass is going to be phenomenal in a few years. I mean, just and, big. And, and, you know, again, back to the partnership. For us to solidify that from the get-go lets us feel much more comfortable as we continue to grow and no, no, obviously this I, I think you offering the top percentage right out of the gun is is, is okay. good faith yeah no question about it. you know no and our, our, we have every intention to continue to expand yeah. and potentially have come back and have conversations of where else can we develop a parcel of land and things like that um, for, for growth yeah. um, in the future so we're really here just to say we're an open book and we're here to work with you. Yeah. Um, out of curiosity, what are your intentions of how many uh, potential marijuana companies into the community? We were thinking a couple, but you can yeah, address that. I think for the most part we were looking to have two, um, you know, complete total. Um, we've probably issued four letters of right. non-opposition at this point, right. um, sometimes for the same location, um, you know, where it's been you know, people on the couldn't market, get their funding, the market, yeah, things like that. Or funding is a big hurdle. You know, that sets these guys apart. Particularly mortgage buildings are a real yeah. problem. Well, yeah, you banks. can't do it. Yeah, mortgage right. building, so, so, um, they're, they're, it's very tough. Yeah. 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 yeah we're so very, we're very fortunate that we have some strong investors behind us that are, you know, development is their nature, and so mm -hmm. growth is what they're really looking for. Constantly. So, so you were thinking, t you were thinking two is yeah, probably what you see. We figured that two is probably our max, but we because we don't want to oversaturate the market also um, yeah. the problem being where we allow for the zoning might mean that they might be somewhat near each other um, you know on Kenneth Welch Drive so that's something that we've kind of looked at um, but at the same time as it goes through site plan review and it goes through what it needs to with a special permit there may be some issues there too if one is already established um, the you know, special permit it's granting it's authority might not think that there's, you know, a patient a need or, or yeah. anything like that. Yeah. So it's really kind of first person with the shuffle in the ground yeah, that we've negotiated with that has, and it, it, it's really key because funding it, is such an really, issue. That you'd be the first building on Kenneth Wells Drive, right on the right hand side. Then, so that's great. Yeah, but you know, great. to that point though, I think if you are there, it, it you have such an advantage in the sense that right off. 
The other yeah. applicant has to, one of the things we always ask is, do you feel that you would be in competition or how would that be if you were right across the street or right up the road from another marijuana dispensary? And inevitably they say, well, we're not doing probably what the other people are doing. But I think if you are the first ones there, you have such a huge advantage because you don't have to answer that question. You do whatever you want to do, whatever your business plan calls for, you do it. And you don't have to justify that you're going to differentiate from the existing business. You know, sure. I think there's an advantage to that. And I think, too, that the location of where you are proposing is because it's right at the beginning of the industrial park, it's going to be looked at a little bit more favorably in site plan review that rather than traffic issues. Yeah, people going all the way in. People and out. going all the way in. Yeah. You know, it we have that existing right, businesses. First it's, building on the it's, right. Yeah. You know, the, in, I mean, out. Coming off of 18. They're going to come down 495, intrusive. down 18, and turn in the industrial park. Yeah. That's, that's yeah. So perfect. We, we probably have one other applicant, I would say, that seemed to have their stuff together um, that really was kind of working. Right. Um, so, so so we have it, potentially two out of four. You, you're certainly the, the first. Yeah, two have the, right. the fallen Sotaro off the face of the earth, right. anyways. Right. So right now we okay. probably have you guys, and then there's one other that's. You know, you'll a you'll maybe. see us really start to one was begin to ramp up our, that was one we didn't our pace of any. moving forward. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Can I do you want to tell me who they were? I'm sure you know. Civil engineers here at the Foundation. I withdrew from representing them in January 2015. We actually got special permit in Dennis on November 20th of 2013. 2013, we got special permit, and they haven't put a shovel in the ground yet. It's, uh, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, th this civil engineer was here was here a couple of weeks ago, and he's here tomorrow. Yeah, too. Yep. So you'll, so you'll see us. I feel they're, 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 they're moving along. We're gonna start really picking up our, our speed on everything. Couldn't believe what was actually happening. <laughs> I, are these televised? I mean, do you have these yeah. recorded? Oh, yeah. oh you're yeah. on camera. No, I, yeah, I figured that you have <laughs> you're them recorded. On camera now. We put it on what? our blooper reel. Is that right? <laughs> <laughs> do, you, do, you remember, do you remember what date it was? I'd love to go. I'd love we to go back and watch it. Is that the first yeah. lady that came in? Yes. Yeah. Oh yeah. my god! I can probably. She look lasted right about two seconds. I'd love to. I'd love to. Yeah, I'd love to watch it. it you even have to explain what a business plan was. <laughs> oh, we said, well, you know, how many... And, and they're pursuing this basic questions. And she, she would just get, yeah, get defensive yeah. and say, well, how would I know that? Yeah. Well, you're I told here, them to drive so to like, Brockton. You know, for, for instance, if a Chili's were to locate here, they'd know how many customers they could <laughs> yeah. handle. You know, they'd have an idea of the parking. They'd have yeah. an idea of the... Tracy, did you have how am I supposed to know that? Yeah. It was really weird. This is a poor chain. No, no. Yeah. <laughs> at least we're, we're probably getting oh, better at understanding uh, the business plans because... Sure. Y nope. Your model on of, of square footage and grow is, right. is similar to to the leaders in the yeah. industry. Well, that's you know this is all we do, and they right. they have it's great cultivator as part of their team, you know, right. so they know what they're doing. This is, this is yeah. agenda item number Our director one. of cultivation July currently operates thirty thousand square feet in Oregon, which July twenty fifth. So okay. It was whatever meeting was right around here. that, which was uh, July twenty seventh. Okay. Yeah. All right. So I'm gonna, I, I might have to just put it on the background. That was the lady, right? Yeah. Oh, it, it, it was <laughs> even <laughs> after, after she left, I think we all just cracked up. Okay, great. Well, I don't, um, if you have any other questions for us or anything that you think, I'm going to watch it, so <laughs> don't, I really am. Um, or any, yeah, if there's anything. Oh, I, I think you've, in your first meeting with us, you gave us a lot of facts right. and figures, which were good. We understand. I remember the numbers. Do you have business Which is always good. So yes, of course. Here's one. Thank Valerio you. Romano. Valerio's there. Yeah, or Val's fine. That's mine's changing, I think, this week. We're signing this thing. So. Three need. Uh, I'll take another card, actually. Sure. I want to I keep, I'll keep this with my. Uh, yeah, actually, I have a card, too. <laughs> Thank you. Awesome. Well, thank you very much for your Th time. Thank you for coming. Thank in you. And being patient with us. Oh, of course, oh, that wasn't long. Yeah. yeah, and if you have any concerns or, or issues, by all means, you know, reach right. out to Rita, and if you need to get back on an agenda, we're, we're happy to talk. Great. I, I think that for-profit, non-profit definition is probably sort of the fundamental concern yeah. that we probably have right now. You yep. Know, no, that's that so much can, uncertainty. And we can address that definitely. Yeah, we won't Great. have another town meeting until June on that. So just okay. to kind of give you a timeline as to when we would even possibly be okay. able to change that because our town meeting is on Monday. 
Let me just sign the warrant. The fall one, yeah. <laughs> oh, so yeah. You're, you're, your That's spring town meeting is in June? Usually, yeah. Oh, okay. The annual is in June. This okay. is more or less an in between clean. Special. Yeah. Okay. Great. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah, thank I appreciate you. it. Thank thank you. I would shake hands, you. but I've had a little cold today, so I don't want to get you sick. Yeah. Thank you, Val. Yeah, absolutely. You see more and more of us. Yeah. Yes. For good reason. It's a good thing. Right. Now, after you have meetings, if you have any concerns, and, of course. But, well, but the go, town has been really receptive, go to guy, right. and um, you right. know there haven't been any hiccups or anything like that so far. So we're no. feeling we just paved the road to your building. I, too. <laughs> yeah. I know. I yeah. feel so. I was like, man, I wish I didn't have to dig up this perfect road. It's so beautiful. Thank you. The other side of Take the road. Care. Well, it was when we've been going there. It was dirt, and I was like, "Oh, because oh, okay. we're going to have to pull electricity okay. from the other side of the road." Okay. So, yeah. well, thank <laughs> you. So much. Thank you. Bye. Take Thanks. care. Okay, agenda item number three is to review scope of services and contract from the Collins Center regarding our Community Compact HR grant. We have a copy of a contract and a scope for review. Glenarinda, Lorraine, and Rita have met with Mary and Libby to discuss the project. Do you want to just give us an overview on this, Rita? Well, where it is over the $10,000, I wanted to request the Sluckman authorize me to sign the agreement. Um, we have reviewed it, and we feel that the scope is broad enough that if we needed to bring in any other um, activities that we'd want them to do, but pretty much they've encompassed everything that we asked them to do. And hiring policy is one of uh, the priorities. I don't know if, Mitzi, if you saw. Yeah, so how much was the grant for? 20000 Perfect. Right, I and you're no spending complaints. it, right. Yeah, all right. Great. So I move that we approve uh, the contract. I'll second that. And authorize. And authorize Rita to sign it and spend the money. We've already received the money, actually. Right. Um, Thank you, Mitzi. All those in favor? I didn't do that Aye. one. Aye. I didn't do that one. No. You did the forty thousand dollars. It's just part of the entirety of the <laughs> community contact. Agenda item number four: We need to review and vote to award the drug and alcohol testing service services through Sausage. Sausage. <laughs> I'd just like to comment on this uh, okay. right now. This is for the random drug testing for uh, the highway. Uh, our van drivers and the COA employees um, yep. currently, when we get the notice, uh, it probably takes a half a day for the employee to stop what they're doing, go over to Tristan, um, and through the uh, group purchasing with Surgis, uh, They'll drive to the facility and test on site. And I know Jeremy and, and Kelly and I, we all agreed that that would save a lot of time yep. from driving over to Tristan Medical, which is? On 44. 495. 495. Yeah. And they moved up even further. They were on, um, I think, Route 138, exit 9 maybe, but they've moved up now, I think, okay. to the Wheaton College exit. All right, so, so you you want us to do this. This is a change from what we're currently doing. This will make it easier. Yep. Yep. Tristan will still do the physicals and the drug testing for new employees, but this is the random that we're required yep. to do. All right. I'm I am making a motion that we do so. I'll second that. <laughs> Any discussion? And why is it even before us if we're just changing? It's awarding a bid. Locations yeah. or something. I mean, changing companies. But it's no money. It's no money. It's because Sir is required that the board of selectmen award all yeah, the Because contracts. there's no money in this. No matter what the money amount is, they require it. Okay. Yep. Okay. All right. All those in I favor? second it. Aye. 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 The motion carries. It's unanimous. I've got new no ones. Let's see. Hmm? Number five, we have some wage scales. Okay, and these are the <clears throat> newest ones. And you have one in your agenda already, Christine. Okay, good. Sorry. 
we check in the percentages? No. I'm just I had to be <laughs> Todd and Lorraine. These are they appear a little bit different, but um, so what I'm asking the board to do um, for the union employees, because these will be Appendix A in the contract, I need all three years approved. So my only question is, um, so the Council on Aging Director, what? In January, she will move. She moves to, to what? I'm just trying to remember. Does she go to C? Yes. Okay, so yeah. does that matter? Like, do we need to re-vote that then here? After the first of the year, just the... Just that. Okay. Well, now, well, we so already you voted have a good on question, it. because this is going to be... A, you've voted to do it, yeah. but it doesn't show on here, because... It doesn't make any difference. When we negotiated the contract with the union, um, she was in the level that she's currently... I didn't in. ask you to put in uh, she's the comment to the right, either. Oh, non-union. Yeah, she's right. non-union. That's right. So... So Lincoln voted after voted the first of the year. After the first of the year. Okay. Okay. All right. Are we good with these numbers? Sure. Hey. Anybody want to make a motion? I will make a motion that we approve. So. Well, go ahead. I'll second Wage that. Scales. I'll second that. Further. Well, why did we take these comments on the right hand side and add them to that? Because you, you Todd put that on there just to reflect what it was. That, that can come off. On it's not on all of them. It didn't print take it on off. all of them. I vote, yeah. I vote that it comes off. I didn't okay. authorize it be there. It's not part of it. Yeah, I'll take. If someone want to do math? They can do it on another page. So I'll take it out. Just over to the side, what it says on that. Right. Oh, this, this I call those little... comments. Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. Um, subject to that amendment. Right. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Two minutes. Agenda item number six, vote to accept the resignation of Catherine Sankis from the Council on Aging Board of Directors. Chairman Hollenbeck. We've tried them all. I was on the earlier ones. <laughs> that's and a new board one. members. That's a new I guess one. I should take over this. Uh, I guess that's a item. new one, right. <laughs> this is from Kelly? Oh, look, I'm on the next one, too. <laughs> Kelly, jeez, Kelly, come on. I guess you should have gone to that. I'll, spe I'll speak to her tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> I'll speak to her tomorrow. I go to that triad thing. Uh, so at the November 1 board, uh, Council on Aging meeting on no November 1, the board members accepted a resignation letter from Catherine Sankis. I would like to take the time to mention that Mrs. Sankis has served the board for many years. Kathy has been great, a great asset to the council and the center as well. She has performed many volunteer hours, and her presence on the board will surely be missed. Ellie Conway, COA Director. So we received this letter. We have a resignation. I guess we are voting to accept it, and but there is oh, but look, number that's the next number agenda. seven's okay. next. So I move that we accept Catherine Sankis's resignation from the Council on Aging Board of Directors. I'll second that. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. <clears throat> Agenda item number seven, request from Council on Aging Board of Directors to appoint Joanne Bowes as a full member and Robert Staples as an alternate member. Chairman Selectman, <laughs> Chairman Hollenbeck, <laughs> Chairman Selectman, I've hit the wall. It's official. Um, so, yeah, they want to appoint those people. <laughs> <laughs> so I move that we appoint Joanne Bowes, Joanne Bowes as the full-time member to take Catherine Sankis's place 
term to expire July 31, 2018, and Robert Staples as an alternate member with a term to expire July 31st, 2018. I'll second that. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Sleigh bells ring, are you listening? <laughs> it's time to review and vote on the holiday schedule. Oh, this is all the holidays. I just thought this was gonna be the fun winter festival festive wow. winter ones <laughs> I vote uh, for Christmas it's my favorite one we have the following holiday schedule to consider there are several dates here I'm not going to read them we've had an opportunity to review these hopefully in advance there are 12 documented holidays plus two floating half days or one full day that are subject to approval and change by the selectmen. Typically, what do we do? We like give off like the day after Thanksgiving sometimes yes, yeah. and stuff like that. Used and to be the half a day before Thanksgiving Yep. and a half a day before Christmas. So the years ago, the board did the day before Christmas and not the half day, before the full day. Yep. And the employees like that. Does anybody have any questions about this list? Not I. Mitzi? No. Nope. Mitzi's already reading the next stuff, so yeah. she's not even interested. <laughs> I already threw that away. How? <laughs> <laughs> you better hurry up. Well, geez, somebody else make a motion then if you want to speed it up. Um, I move that we approve the 2018 holiday schedule as presented. I'll second that. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 <coughs> we have meeting minutes. They are for August 21st and September 6th of 2017. Anybody have any changes? Comments, questions, concerns? No. I move that we approve them as drafted. I'll second that. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries, it's unanimous. No grammar changes, nothing? My spelling there was changes? One, all but right, it didn't all right, no, go ahead. So much. We'll, we'll keep going. It was keep on the going. other items list. I just had to rub it in. No, go ahead. I, I interrupted you. We're on new business. Do you know, we have any? But I was okay with that. Do we have new business? Um, we have no. old business. We have old business. The old business is an update from Selectman Hollenbeck regarding the Regional Finance Committee meeting of November 2. Chairman Hollenbeck. <laughs> Chairman. Yeah. Chairman yeah. Hollenbeck. <laughs> All right. The last time we did this, we gave you two minutes, and it went on for like twenty. Can if, you, can you if I just if precise? I just speak for two minutes, we'll be fine. Oh, oh, yo! That, that means if John doesn't pipe in, go ahead. Ready, go. Okay. So meeting was held. I was late because I got stuck in traffic. When I walked in, what was on the table was a motion and a second made by Steve Owen and Derek Gracia to disband the regional finance subcommittee. And they were discussing. How can they even do that? that. It's, it's part of the regional agreement. You that can't is disband it. true. It is in the regional agreement. Um, so we talked about it for a little while. I was not in favor of doing so. I actually abstained from the vote because I didn't hear the entirety of the discussion. So I didn't feel that it was proper necessarily to vote um, at that time. But I expressed my uh, disapproval with the motion. Um, because there was no alternative means to get the communication between those boards. So I had thought that if we were to meet with the Finance Committee, which we could do potentially before town meeting, just to talk about maybe ways that we could have a better sense of communication with the schools. And it might be that we just look at what some other towns do, which is they meet between the two towns on a quarterly basis to discuss school budgetary problems, and then maybe meet with the entirety of the school committee to discuss the budget problems in a meeting that's not a portion of a school committee meeting, but a separate meeting. And maybe that happens once or twice, you know, during the budget process. But that was really what kind of came of it, was that 
I didn't feel comfortable disbanding a committee where then we would have no direct means of gathering information about what was going on. I think that the biggest issue is that that committee doesn't know what it's supposed to be doing. And <laughs> that hasn't really been made so clear, per se. Um, and, and nobody's really taken the time to kind of explore what that really means, I think. I, there's just a disconnect between, I think, the intent of the various members on the committee. And we really need to take some time to think about the purpose of the committee before somebody just wipes it off the table and to really hone but in I on think that. John and I were encouraging you not to go mm -hmm. because we don't, or I'm not going to speak for John, but I don't think that it's been very fruitful. And I think back on when I was on the school committee and we fully regionalized that this, I, my, I may not have the details of this correct, but my memory is that this idea was more or less an afterthought, um, I think proposed by John McCarthy for the sake of pacifying the boards of selectmen. The selectmen wanted to have more insight into the budget process of the school and more say over the budget process, much like we still want to have today. And I think that nobody on the school committee was really for it, but it was kind of put in there as a, as a, a token, um, uh, you know, olive branch, if you will, to the, to the boards of selectmen at the time. I mean, that seems to be my recollection of it. Well, nobody, nobody was advocating for it. And in fact, I think I, I, if you recall at the last meeting, I spoke a little bit about Dave Davenport's frustration with it when it was enacted and it did little or nothing to move forward the, the budgetary issues um, when it was first enacted. So I think it's, it's had a bad track record, maybe because um, of what you're saying, maybe, maybe it's simply because it's an advisory board that has no authority, binding authority on the school committee, and it's probably just not the, the, the correct process in which towns in the school committee get together to discuss the budget. I think, though, I mean, Lorraine found this thing. I don't even know where it is. It must be like an addendum to the regional school district. Where it says that the regional school district... The policy. This is the she policy. It. Okay. The regional school district committee delegates the development of the district budget to the regional finance subcommittee, which will, with the superintendent, business manager, and the district treasurer, develop annual budgets for the operating and maintenance of the district, and such capital budgets as shall be necessary for the pursuit of the goals of the district and the educational programs proposed and approved by the district committee. I mean, the first paragraph is is difficult to do from how, again, how would I know what the goals of the district happen to be as a member on that committee. But it talks about, too, that you know, the annual budget <coughs> for each school operated by the district shall be developed with input from the school council. Um, the district agreement notwithstanding, there shall be no requirement for the annual operation and maintenance budget for the district to be adopted prior to the receipt of funding as to the state. In developing a budget, blah, blah, blah. This is at the discretion of the Regional Finance Policy Subcommittee. An informal public information meeting may be held to solicit input from the public. Um, it, it's just, it kind of talks about what it should do, which really is pushing the development of the school budget, honestly, to the towns of Freetown and Lakeville between the Board of Selectmen and the Finance Committee, because that's a quorum of that. In reality, right, but, but that's, but that's just the policy, right? I mean, how many people on the school committee even know that that's the policy? I, and, and that's not to say that they should or shouldn't. There's plenty of policies that I don't know about that <coughs> I should on on this board. I mean, I guess my point is is that that policy was probably developed by Dave Davenport. Oh. He's no longer even on the school committee. Like, so they have no connection to the history of, of that, nor do they have any any desire to to shape it in in the form of of that. I guess I guess my point is is that if the regional finance subcommittee is not doing what it should, I am for trying other avenues of of 
working with them to understand their budget needs and work with them to try to understand our limitations. Because I think that that's the disconnect that, that you speak of in terms of communication. It's like, you know, we, we talked about a, the, the special town meeting in terms of where we want to allocate money, and we did a great job at answering Norm as to why is this a reaction to a certain degree, why is this a reaction to what happened on the town meeting floor with the schools. I mean, it was in the sense, um, well, you explained all that, and I think you did a great job with that, but it, it, it's not that we're trying to harm education. It's not that we uh, are against what the, the school district is doing. The district got ass swamps it up to level two. The, the building itself, that's great news. The, Aponiquit did a great job with the MCAS scores. I mean, there's, there's a lot of positive stuff going on with the within the school district. But if we're going to just take this entrenched position, and, and they are, and the, and the Regional Finance Subcommittee isn't doing anything to get people talking on a regular basis, maybe that's not the forum. Maybe the forum really is a meeting of the entire school committee with the entire boards of selectmen focused on the school budget. So here's the thing that on, I... On a quarterly basis. Right. And what I completely disagree with, and I don't take offense to it per se, but what I disagree with is every single time when somebody says that this committee hasn't done anything, because for the past three years, created scenarios that has funded a budget every single year with what is tolerable for Freetown and what is tolerable for Lakeville. No, no, and of course. Right. Right. So, but, but, but that's not how they see it, or that's not how it's being perceived. And that's not, every time I go to these meetings, I'm told that, you know, it's, it's not helpful, it's not useful, it's, you know, all of this stuff. But ideally, I think the ultimate, the, the purpose of it was really to see what each town can afford and determine if this is not... The, not the budget per se and where the line items are necessarily going, but to say where are we going to get this money from and how can we do this and how much money can we actually pull forth from the towns that fits within the budget. And it's, you know, they'll, they'll kick it back and say that well, people have been proposing it's 2.5% increase, that it's this, that it's that. Well, it's a complicated formula where, you know, if the property values are going up, well, Freetown's going to have more of a hit, but we want to be sensitive to that in the event that it was the opposite way that would, you know, cause the town to have to do something different. So I, every single time we meet and people talk about how it's, it's not productive because the problem is, I think the measure of a good committee is that everybody kind of walks away with some measure of compromise. And the fact that they're not maybe getting the maximum amount approved that they want means that they think it fails. And I disagree with that because I think that we've been able to sustain that budget. The schools have done well. You know, they've been able to turn out some, you know, progress. But the school has never adopted a budget that the Regional Finance Committee has put forward. They have. They did. No, no, but not last year. Not last year, but the year before we did. Um, that was the vote. That was the recommendation that everyone says we never recommended anything. It was the only time we actually ever took a vote on anything. Right. And no, we I recall passed that. a voted budget, and that's what the school ended up going with. But again, reluctantly, which made it turn into a negative experience versus what it actually was, was really looking at the numbers and saying, this is what we can afford. And again, every single year, we hear the same thing, which is, you're making cuts, you're making cuts, you're making cuts. We're reducing, as John always points out, we're reducing the increase of what we're giving you. Because we're starting, we're not, we're all starting from here, they're starting from up here. And anything that comes down from up here is an issue. You know, and, and what we, you know, ideally try to do is get closer to here. But I think when we start, we're kind of at, you know, where we believe is almost the max of our tolerance. Now last year, I think was a little bit different because had I known that Freetown hadn't gone up to their levy limit, I would have proposed a different number for us because we had a lower amount that we were supporting because I thought it was too hard on Freetown, honestly. And when Freetown had to come to the table with $565,000 more, 
I think that that was information that had I known they had an additional 400 in the levy limit, I would have had a different approach in which scenario I would have supported, the, honestly. They never, they never yep. brought that up at that they, It was never brought up. And, it and, was and when Aaron said, well, maybe we should meet the selectmen, the finance committees, and the school committee, that's usually the shit show. Well, I think meeting. we can well, meet. But, but can I agree, but, but there's, there's a disconnect. No, but there's a disconnect. If, 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 the if we go to town meeting and money is fought at the floor level, then we failed in our message. <coughs> and, and so, I, uh, forgetting whether it's the finance committee, it's a failure that the confidence of the number that the selectmen in the towns come up with gets questioned and if the public, which they can, take the money out of that budget and take it out of stabilizations and make you go broke, if we cannot say that's the wrong thing or somehow convince them of that, well, then, then we're, we're kind of failing in that. Now they may do that all the time until all the money's gone. Cool. Because that's politics, as I guess, as, as Aaron once said. But uh, yeah. So so we had we we Aaron and I had certainly encouraged you because you come out of there sometimes like holy crap! I told them they should do this, this, and this, and you're almost running the meeting. But there's no one changing any positions. There's no one being convinced that what you're saying is the right message. Well, and and, and I, I get part of that. I mean, no, but, I, but I get here, that. Here's the thing, though. I I, I commend Mitzi for oh. going and, and, and wanting to stick out with the process and yep. wanting to, to keep moving forward with it. I think that's the right yeah. approach. Yeah. And, and I, I maybe I'm not wired for that, and that's a, a shortcoming I have, because I know I would have given up on asking for that two hundred eighty-six thousand dollars long before you did, and you got the money. So, it's you know you have you have an approach that that maybe I'm not capable of, but I can see the value in it. So, uh, right, I'm we, not we right we 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 had in, suggested in we had suggested that it go away. They took that because they obviously watched the selectmen's meetings right. and go, well, the selectmen all agreed. Of course, Mitzi pointed out she didn't agree. No, nope. which if if you I don't object if you continue to yeah. go. And, and I, I think know that I'm not capable or desirous of going because right. I'm not going right. to go around and around. We, You're we, definitely we the have best two different we have two different approaches. And now, now with that no, said, not my approach versus yours. Now, with that said, yeah. let's try to explore some other other, other approaches because. I mean, like like you said, when we got together with the FinComs and the Selectmen and. You know, that was really Paul Sadik's opportunity to attack, and, and he was he was putting on a show, I think, po politically, which is fine. But I think if you had a subsequent meeting where you said, all right, fine, all of that's off of everybody's chest, now let's dig into the numbers, I think well, that you could, you could get somewhere. Right, and that's the thing is if you really need to take everybody and somehow keep pushing it at everybody, that it's a, it's a numbers game. It's not... Right. It's not full of emotions. It's full of numbers, and numbers come to a conclusion in some way, shape, or form. And I know that you know. I watched the beginning of the meeting that I was unable to attend. I was going to ask you if you watched that because. And you know, th there's things you know about. Well, how are you supposed to? They say that there's a budget out there. How are they supposed to know? You know what we're going to ask for with a budget. And the simple fact is, we know that you used a million dollars from your E and D. And your E&D is sitting at 84000 So going into this budget year, we know it's going to be a concern because right. nobody's going to just magically give you a million dollars to put into the budget. So ask? it's it's things like that that I explain, and yet I don't necessarily believe that I'm being heard. And so I sit there and just keep reiterating the point. And, again, I don't have an emotional tie to the results other than clearly I want to have good schools, but I also want to look out for the interests of the financials of the town and also, you know, as much as possible for the schools. It would be great if they could propose to us a plan that included some OPEB funding. There would be things that I would right. think would be 
they're looking at their long-term Well, that's the finances. thing. I think it would be nice to try to convey the importance of, of the fiscal policies we've adopted on the town level to the I, school district. And I tried that, too. And I brought the policies to a regional finance subcommittee meeting, and I was ready to, because you know, because we, we talked about what we were going to do. And at the last meeting that I went to last week, the directive from the previous meeting was that we were going to open up our books and records and everyone was going to come prepared to talk about it. So I brought a packet with all that information and the free cash stuff that we talked about tonight and all of that, and that wasn't the meeting. The meeting turned into what was a reaction to this meeting right. and the right. update right. of disbanding the committee. Right. And there's things posted on Facebook to rally the emotions and things like that, which that's not the point of any of this. And that's the part that I get frustrated with, but I, a, I still think that there's it's, hope it's, to it's educate. A, it's a numbers game. As you pointed out, as long as you have money in your bank account, they want it. That they've not done their job of their budget and for the next five Fred years. And is retiring at the end of this year. Yes, so June 30. That's right. another, um, right. Right. you know, a piece but that... But anyways, if, if you, you've gone over your two minutes by 20 minutes. Uh, but yes. But I if stop. You want, if, if you go back no, to the tape, no, no, no. I stop at 8.53, <laughs> and then if you, you interjected no, with us, and then you guys he, took he, it and ran with it. You Aaron didn't. did it. I didn't do it. Exactly. But anyways, I if you want to continue, minutes. if you want to continue the mission, because I watched the meeting, and I, and I commend you for, for doing it. I, I don't, let, let's see, we, we, need to, we need to figure this out. They've not figured it out. We've not figured it out. The Finance Committee hasn't figured it out. And I'm not so sure other towns have figured it out. So what I want to do is at least talk to the Finance Committee before town meeting, you know, because we have a called meeting at 630. So if we put that on the agenda, just because they're going to be up there, so maybe we can just have a small discussion with them, at least to think about ways that well, it might be. Uh, mo most of them are available to, to come here, too. Yeah, we could, we mean, could do it in a separate meeting if you right, want to. Right, right. I don't mind the half okay. hour. Yeah, that's but, fine. But clearly... If, if I talk, I mean, I don't talk out of turn. If, if Katie and Ryan say, I believe in Mitzi's numbers, if you will, and, and George, he believes in them, but he's going to vote whatever number they give him. Now, George can take exception to that after he watches the tape. But I, I, know, I know how the vote the vote goes. We haven't convinced anyone of our physical policy. I go... Wow, we spent all the time on that, and and you might as well throw it away. Right. It's somehow we've become the bad guys in this, yes. mm -hmm. and and I think that that's just it's not a, a true reflection of it. I don't. If the school, if the school wants resources beyond what we're capable of giving them, because we don't want to degrade the services that the town provides, then I'm all for them putting that political power to, into action and, and getting out there and advocating for more money in the form of an override. That, that's, that's the fix to this. Right. The fix isn't to come and scrutinize our decisions. Well, that's, well, let me back up. Anybody can come and scrutinize our decisions, and I think that we do a good job at defending our decisions because I think they're, they're based on numbers and they're not based in emotion. They're based on our economic or our, our fiscal principles and that they're sound. And with all of that said, <clears throat> I'm not against them trying to get more resources for their, for their department. It just can't be at the expense of everything else. I think there's a balance to all of this. Right, right. I think you have to put on your, your cap because you have to convince the taxpayers of that message. And, and I You have to. If you don't, right. You, you, I mean, but we, heard it though, town. we heard it at the It'll last town, town meeting. We heard parents coming up. Now, granted, they expanded the electorate and they got a lot of parents there. But a lot of people around town said to me, I'm okay with paying higher taxes. Mm -hmm. To improve the schools, I right. am too. Now, now, the, I said, okay, but that's just you. Do you go to town meeting? Do you, will you, would you vote for an override? I don't know if that's the case, but I think that there's people out there who who are okay with that idea, and I think that they are okay with their school committee. 
And who am I to say whether that's right or wrong? I mean, if, if it's working for the, for the people in terms of who they elect for a school committee, if they're happy with the quality of the education they're getting and the school committee is saying we need more money, then it's okay to me if they want to put that message out to the voters and try to get more money. But, but I, I draw the line when it infringes on our ability to operate a town budget right. um, responsibly. And, and, and they don't get that. They no, don't no, get I that think, part. I they, think they, they, they may. Well, they may get no, you that. haven't convinced them of it yet. Right. Well, and I don't know as if we've ever put it that way. Well, well, so if you looked at that one sheet of paper that I handed out, or that that budget, like the 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 pie chart that I put together, which was our sources of revenue and our expenditures with the current budget, and that the sources of revenue amounted to you know, $800,000 because we got 520 through our 2.5% levy limit and our new growth was on top of it. So we had about 800 something thousand. And our expenditures in the budget before the expenditures for the school were 950,000 in increased operating expenditures. And the way we funded it was by, there were, um, it was less debt payments actually at the time. So we had a reduction in the debt payments we had and I think we had a maybe a transfer or something. If I looked back at the sheet of paper, I could see. But it was trying to put it in a graphical form of this is all the money we take in. If th so we have a base level of existing services, which doesn't generally go down. Actually, no, it, what we did is we made some savings in the budget. By consolidating the Department of Inspectional Services, we ended up with some savings. So that's how we funded the difference between what we spent, that was an increase, and what the revenues were coming in because we reduced some of our existing expenses but if you were to look at the expenses are here and the revenue is here and that's what it is it, you can't go like this that and that's that's the big thing to put the expenses higher than the revenues otherwise you're taking from the existing budget and the existing budget is everything that we're doing and we're being as conservative as but possible because you have that. money in the bank all that goes out the window and, and we, I oh I get it right. I mean we, we've not convinced them of fiscal responsibility. We, we, no, but I we, think we, that's keep, we keep sending the message, so we really have to put our thinking but cap I, but on I think that that's, in that. But that's where, that's not a reasonable expectation because of what I just said. You're going to ruin the town. Well, no, no. I think that, <laughs> I think if the, the voters are happy with the, their school committee, and they've elected people to represent the school or the towns in reference to the school committee. And the school committee wants a certain level of services and they're committed to providing those level of services despite the cost, then you're never gonna change that. I mean, and I've said before, the only way you do it is elect people that don't think that way. But nobody thinks that way. I mean, we think that way because we're on the town side looking back the other way, but my point is is that you're never going to get people who are on the school committee who to a large degree um, either are employees for schools or had worked for schools, which is fine. I'm not yeah. saying, but that's what I've said before is a cultural difference. You're never going to change that culture. So you have to either embrace that and try to work with them to provide them what you can within reason, which I think we try to do or you can try to I mean your 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 idea of getting through to them is is not I don't think that that's a reasonable it does, expectation it doesn't work it, and it's not right. like like the way they see it is wrong they just have a different perspective on it they're they're but, more willing to spend but, money but on if, education right. but but if first if we if we agree and certainly I had proposed I had proposed I was different the, Propose that your solution is do an override. The, I I still believe that's the solution. I, I so I do too. If you if you send that message, but well, we didn't send that message. Well, I, I well, we did we didn't I mean, do that at the town meeting. We gave them an out as to how to raise the money, and they jumped on it. Well, I mean, so so. But at the same time, I think the the critical mistake we made at the town meeting was not moving to reconsider 
immediately after it happened. Because oh. if we did that, it would have not been reconsidered, exactly. and it would have been over. Exactly. That was a critical tactical well, mistake. Well, but that that happened despite jumping up and down. But didn't, right. Didn't but and, and then of course proposing the the override on the town meeting floor was a was a tactical error as well, in my opinion. I don't but. think so because I still <laughs> believe that if you want to fund the schools in a sustainable manner, you need to go above the know, two and a half percent. You know, sure. No, no, you do. I'm not going to do it with 525,000 plus new growth. But no. but that's a conversation you don't do on a town meeting no. floor. No. Like that, that, that was my but, only but, concern with right, that. Right, but we have to be prepared. We have to go to the town meeting with the same message. You, we, we all agree to disagree or whatever, but we have to say, what is our message? Here's the money that you can spend. If, you, if that's not enough, for whatever reason, then right. you've you've got to raise taxes via an override. If you keep taking money out of this bank account, it's going to be empty, just like your E&D, whether the E&D became empty because it was properly budgeted or whether you emptied it because you wanted to make it empty. Who knows? Right. Anyways. I mean, it. Anyways. Yeah. All right, two minutes is up. Two minutes is up. So, any I other business? Thank you for going to the meeting, Mitzi. Do we have any other business? Do we have anything else? Do we want to talk about some of these other items that we got? <laughs> I'm glad the 5K raised like almost raised 10 grand. Nine, nine, yes. Uh, over $9,000. I was just going to say that. So this and, was the run with grow, the cops. And that's a growing thing. And we, we had the pasta dinner the night before. And we'll make that even bigger next year. So the Lakeville so Police Department. Senior Center raised money and they raised money. Yep, yeah. the Lakeville Police Department raised almost $10,000 with their September 16th, third annual Lakeville Police 5K Run with the Cops. So that's good. We talked about Cedar Pond Preserve being ready to go. We got that letter, or I should say Brian uh, and our, our planning board chairman got that letter from Jeremy Peck. So that's good news. Um, that's pretty much it. And then Charlie Baker's memo. We've had many iterations of it this yes, week. Yes, we, we have a we have a much the final one. much nicer um, yeah. one ready to no, go. This one was one that. Yeah. This one somehow made its way off to Greg Corbo, and he added some uh, some great language to the latest draft. So I reviewed this. If you want to look at it, you can before you sign it. Or just sign it. You don't have to read it. <laughs> I want to sign it. Only a letter to the governor. Just sign it's it. It's a nice paper, too. I think they got better. They got better as we went along. On paragraph 7, I think you, you call him a dork. <laughs> <laughs> but just sign you it. Call you call him not a it. true Republican. <laughs> you call him a rhino. Right. No. These are for the sign folder, too. Mrs. Uh, yeah. Lorraine said Oops. to tell you she is on her way back from the school committee meeting. Oh, yeah, she Maybe went. Maybe she could give us an update, but uh, we'll probably be gone. Right. We don't want to hear it anyway. Right, right, right. That's just me, right? <laughs> Tracy, on the surges contract, just the chair, right? Yeah, so it doesn't really say that we're just going to so cease and desist. Just as the chair. Well, no, that's not yeah, nice what surge. we're planning on doing unless we don't it get what we there. want. Right. And then who cares because they'll probably just ignore it. Did, did we continue to ask him for a meeting or are we just talking, voicing our concerns? No, we, we asked we're for an asking. answer. We're, this we're is, back this to is that. We're yeah, back to the good. end. This is we're back to direct. Right. Right. That's good. Um, because because if they just throw it in the rubbish, then we're kind of yeah. Let me see. Uh, Is that Lorraine? Right? Back. So we can go into a two-minute executive session. Can, we are we chair. doing an executive session because they were an executive we session? To, yeah. If we wanted the update, we, we, we probably want to do that. Two minutes. Just like the school committee discussion. Can you show them oh, the taxes? Like you like that? You yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Here, have a sticky. What's this? That's, that's the, the real estate tax on 475 Oh, that's 12. the current real estate tax. Right, right. So they continue to pay that. that that's yep. that's good. Is there anything else to say, Claudia? 
And, and I don't think they're up to any shenanigans, but. Let's see, so we're going to discuss the refund finance. Oh, with finance. We can. Yeah, so you can put that on, on the agenda, the agenda. And then that okay. way we can have that discussion and say maybe brainstorm for another meeting yeah. when we can actually have that meeting. With, with the finance committee being there? Yeah, yes. right before yeah, that no, meeting. I, I so we can just kind of talk to them and have the brainstorm and then have a formal meeting. Yeah, yeah. I, I think that's the right thing yeah. to do. And then that way it's just, this is what we want you to think about. So. Yeah. Okay. Good with that. Is this in the sign folder? Okay. Yeah. Yes. Can we move on to executive session so we can get out of here? Please. <laughs> What's going on? Do you want to call executive session so we to, can get an update? You could, could an make update. a motion, couldn't you? I guess, but you're the chair. But I guess I'll make a motion. Anyone could move it. I move. Chairman Hollenbeck moves. <laughs> See you, Joe. Hi, Joe. Thank you. <laughs> to enter executive session pursuant to MGL Chapter 30A, Section 21A3, to discuss strategy with respect to collective bargaining, specifically the teachers' union. If an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the bargaining position of the board and the chair so declares, and I do declare, Can and I not come back. Should we amend that to include the formal name of the mm -hmm. unions? Because there's like three unions. Session. It's all the teachers unions. Three teachers with unions. Clerical and custodial. Yeah. Clerical okay. and custodial. Teachers, clerical. All and three. Custodial. Yeah. And, I need that. Did you second that? I did. I seconded it. Seconded it. Yes. Powdery. Aye. Uh, Burke. Aye. Uh, Burke. Aye. Hollenbeck. Aye. Very nice. That's one.